Pretzels definitely make the sound you want into a microphone. I can't even imagine a Zoom stand-up show because half of comedy is pulling from the audience. Oh, Bennett hasn't seen any of the uh, Dat Fan shows or anything, has he? No. Oh, Bennett. No, I haven't seen any of it. (laughs) Yeah, I just booked another one. Brent will have to send me a link next time he's on one. Oh, I will. Have you guys seen those drive-in theater shows? I don't think that would be terrible because you're still getting that live element. I don't, I don't know if it's the same having not done it. If it's like for what me, one of the challenges with the Zoom shows is you can kind of hear people, you kind of can't, but you don't get that direct like auditory response. Whether it's the joke was great and they're laughing, or the joke was shit and they're not, but you just don't, mm-hmm. you can't tell, and it gets weird. Like one of the things that question actually came up on that podcast, and um, I said, you know, it's weird. Like people pause after each joke. It's like giving yourself a weird applause break after each punchline. It's <laughs> fucking, yeah. it's just weird, man. It's probably a lot less of a group dynamic, too. For sure. You don't have that everybody. weird, like, people in a club, energy, none of that stuff. Um, do you guys get sponsorship money, by the way, if I hold this up and do one of these? Like, <laughs> you get some dollars for it? <laughs> somebody somebody we'll might send us a couple. Money. Yeah, somebody, we'll yeah, we'll probably, probably get demonetized money, again. Yeah, yeah it was just... <laughs> Great. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, we're, we're great at getting demonetized already. Oh, we we're feeling the YouTube experience in that sense. Every day I, told I, Boy Scouts of Ameri- I told Boy Scouts of America I'd drop the lawsuit if they sponsored the show, but they didn't want to do it. They didn't want to. They wouldn't do it. Uh, <laughs> I've been doing a joke about that Boy Scouts lawsuit, and it always gets this, like, shock response. I, uh, I ask people yeah. if they've heard about the lawsuit, and, like, 90,000 people made a claim. Um, and then people are like, oh, I didn't hear about that. I'm like, yeah. And then I go, you know. The, the punchline is this is uh, this is the original salute for Boy Scouts of America. It was designed to be like an indicator of shared values, but what really really was was a warning of how many fingers you could expect inside of you against your will. Nah, and that usually thanks. gets like a. Uh. I started working with this guy that was like 73 and I asked him like what was the secret to his marriage and uh, he told me his wife died of alcoholism like 25 years in. Oh, <laughs> That's how we got through. I doing, also, uh, uh, excuse me, I asked a, I asked a 73, 73 year old man also the key to a happy marriage and he said cheating. <laughs> He's not wrong. He's no longer married, that, that friend of mine. Yeah. That horrible, <laughs> advice. Horrible, advice. horrible advice. Shout out to Horrible Advice Guy. We all have that friend. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. I like that the first thought that comes into your head is to hum the McDonald's commercial jingle. <laughs> it's <laughs> fucking sensational. That's like the oh, thinnest thing you can crazy. possibly do. Uh, Three people are watching. Hi guys, nice to see you. <laughs> I, I'm well, one of don't them. get excited. One of them's me. Oh shit! We're watching <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> I'm just trying to bump the numbers, kid. There's three of us. They're all us. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking amazing. Uh, uh, well, I think I think it's time to have. I'm gonna drink some whiskey. That's what time it is. It's whiskey yeah. Wednesdays. It's time. I've got a little bit of whiskey here. I'm. My wife got me some red label Johnny Walker. So. Ooh. These aren't black I don't label drink times. Who's take one for me? They're not. Uh, these are red label times. These aren't black label times. We don't have that Drake money, so. <laughs> I mean, still name brand. Life ain't that bad. Oh yeah. No name whiskey. Yeah, no name not, whiskey, you're not buddy. To swell. <laughs> no name whiskey in Canada. That's like Crown Royal, I think, isn't it? It's like it's Canadian. No, Canadian whiskey. Canadian Club would be like. Canadian Club. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not an expert on the whiskey. I just started drinking it last year. I didn't. I never had a taste for it, but uh, I developed a little taste for Scotch, and then uh, and then I uh, became a comedian. No longer had Scotch money, and now I've developed a taste for whiskey. And that's that. You're maturing. Yep. Yep. Good times. So what are you? What kind of cocktail are you having over there, Bennett? I've got a, my girlfriend made an apple pie moonshine that I've got a glass of going. Isn't that nice? That sounds exotic. Fancy. Wow. Cheers, everybody. Mm hmm. Cheers. I'm drinking water from a Culligan jug that's on the floor. Oh, that's (laughs) prime time, buddy. I like it. (laughs) So, gentlemen, this is our big Whiskey Wednesday show. What do we have planned? I'm excited to hear what it is. Were you even talking TikTok or comedy in general? 
Uh, no, I think Bennett and David have like a like a bit of a game plan for us. They prepared. Oh, we have a little bit. Of they prepared some things for us. Yeah. I was thinking we, a little bit. we could kind of save the game for a little bit later we'll on. Save the game. Well, we could start out with it if you guys wanted to. <laughs> well, it's a good way to break it. the ice is to see okay. what you guys got going, right? I mean, you guys got some – you're going to surprise us with some things? Yeah, let's see what you got. Yeah, maybe people at home will be thinking of different things that we should be doing on Whiskey Wednesdays. So I'm not sure how this is going to work on here, but I have this game called uh, – it's called five seconds go. So you have, I'm going to be like, <laughs> um, you'll each take turns. And so I'll ask you a question and you'll have five seconds to name three things or like answer the question, oh, whatever shit. the question is. So we're going to do this little game and we're going to answer three questions quickly. Mm -hmm, basically. Well, Emil said he had nothing else to do. So, I mean, here we are. The yeah. bar is low. The bar is low. <laughs> we're... <laughs> the bar is pretty low. <laughs> Okay. Hey, by the way, before we get going, guys, uh, I'm Brent Sills from Silly Side TV. This is Bennett, the producer. Uh, we have uh, Emil from, are you in Ottawa? Yeah, Ottawa, Toronto. Whatever. Ottawa, Toronto, that sort of stuff. Um, uh, we have uh, David, the producer, over here as well. And then we have in the bottom left-hand corner of my TV, we have Adam. Guys, What's up, everybody? What's going on, everybody in Twitter land or wherever you're looking at us <laughs> from? <laughs> whenever, whenever if you're watching us on cable thank you for watching us on cable if not if you're catching us on youtube or facebook cheers to you truckers trekking with trucks is in our chat and says yo adam oh Bye. nice what's up <laughs> truckers trucking yeah. with trucks wow Damn. that yeah, reminds so me of uh, trailers trailers okay. trailers that's, that's what trailers what yeah. have trailers well, the first uh the first podcast i was on a couple uh Pro-Trump Mexican guys out of Tucson. Okay. Yeah. And they're illegals, too. I don't know how they could right. be for Trump. But, yeah. Unpopular today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They must be going crazy. Man. Oh, uh, what? Somebody just messaged us and said they're down to get on. Uh, well, yeah, it's too late. What's his name? No, what's his... Yeah, Ben. Ben wants to get ben? on. Ben? Yeah. Oh, fucking Ben, you're late, man. You're, you want to get on now? You're sitting at home now by yourself on the couch, and you're like, ah, I've done all the Pornhub I can do for the day. I'll send a boy. I'm going to call in to the Silly Side TV show. That's fun. Yeah, I wonder what, I wonder what he's been up to. Yeah. Here. Yes. Oh, yeah. We accidentally posted his his video, I think, but we I took it down. Oh, good. But we oh, that did. Ben. Yeah, that Ben. Oh, no, no, yeah, no, Ben no, McKay. No. Yeah, Ben McKay. Yeah, he's he's really funny. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. This is awesome. I thought it was that other guy that. Oh, we're not no. going to say his name, but he wasn't that yeah, funny. No, Everybody, he, <laughs> he tried hard. He meant well. And he's probably not watching. So no, he's not watching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. I just had to blink, so he uh, should be in in a minute. Awesome. If it totally ruins the vibe of the screens, it's going to be where does where does the fifth screen go? I, I don't. Right asked. now, I got. <laughs> I, I think it like that. drops one below. Drops one below. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Yeah, we're definitely gonna get kicked off at some point. Yeah, 100%. we'll get kicked off. That's all right. It's like pirate it's, radio. I feel like I'm... the forty minute mark. It's. I think we're good. It's. Yeah. I think it. I think it gave us that pop up message that was like, "You love us." So okay. it, I didn't see one. Maybe somebody. Oh. Maybe we got. We're, running with, We're <laughs> running with the devil, people. We're running with the devil. I don't know. That's fine. I'm not going to question it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> hey Bennett, is that giraffe like official Toys R Us merch, or is it like a bootleg from China? <laughs> I think it's a bootleg from Amazon. It's uh, my uh, my few animals are the bar. You know, make sure that nobody comes in, steals my liquor. It's... How long have you had it for? You during COVID. Are you 100% certain it's not to lure children into the bar? No, it's not that. No, I don't share my list. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what, is this a comedy show? Yeah. No, it's like uh, no, it's like the people who like on Halloween are like, oh, like they're going to sneak edibles into like your kids' candy bags. It's like, what? We're not. Like, oh, too expensive. That, that happened to me. No. That happened to you? What, not where, like, well, what, I want to go to that house. Guys, what? Uh, have you guys heard of the uh, what fair is it? It's the one in Galt. Um, the Galt Fair. Yeah, that fair. All right. They uh, all the candy there was like, I Laced? had yeah, and I ate a lot of candy. Wow. And I was so high and I had no idea why. I was like, I haven't <laughs> smoked today. Like I don't know what's oh. going on. 
And then some kind of news article came out about like someone that was lacing the candy, and I was like, oh shit! Wow, that makes sense. Somebody had a lot, a lot of lace left over, and like lying cheap. around. It was super cheap. Mm. I'd honestly buy it again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good times. Who's gonna answer the questions first? Oh yeah, uh, I was kind of waiting for Ben, but we'll honestly just start without him. Yeah, it's fine. We'll get him started. He'll catch up. So. <laughs> Uh, Bennett, do you want to play too? Yeah, yeah, why not? Why not? Okay. So we'll say there's four people playing. We'll say first to uh, first to five points wins. Sure, okay. whatever. Uh, who wants to start? <clears throat> I win. Let's have a meal start. Okay, a meal. That sounds awful. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're the bullet, buddy. You're the bullet. Let's do it up. <laughs> okay, a meal. I need you to list three card games. Three card. Yeah. Crazy Eights, Go Fish, Poker. Okay, well, technically the time move is out, but we'll count that as a practice one <laughs> run. I'll give you an extra. I'll give you another one. Well, then I'm going to need you to fucking speak up. Okay. Use your big boy words. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> I need you to list three types of coffee drinks. Uh, latte, uh, frappuccino, cappuccino. Okay, yeah, that'll work. Well done. Um, okay. It is now... Uh, Adam, do you want to go next? Yeah, let's do it. I used to be good at Jeopardy, but I don't know. Hopefully, I can do this. Okay, Adam, I need you to list three grocery stores. Zayers, Food Basics. Uh, fuck, those are the only cheap ones. Mm, so close. Zayers, Basics, Food ba Walmart, I guess. I'm, yeah, that yeah, was over five You're seconds. <laughs> oh, the judges will count it. We accept. <laughs> yeah, all right. Okay, uh, Bennett, I'm going to need you to list three books. Go. Ah! Anne of Green Gables, Twilight, Harry Potter. You got it. You got it. What's with all? Wait a second. What's Whoa. with all this wife talk? <laughs> we need to unpack That's, this. <laughs> that, is, that is not a married list of books. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. That lady got Harry in trouble, didn't wrong. she? That la Harry Potter lady got like busted for being nice or something, or mean or something. J.K. Rowling. Yeah. Rowling. Oh, J.K. Rowling. Yeah. yeah. All the transgender stuff came out about her. Well, what was it? She's yeah. into what? She's into what yeah. gender? What happened? No, it was, she was just like, she's super like anti-transgender and was very much like it was. Well, tell her not to sleep brutal. with them. Like, <laughs> oh, she's like a denier though. Like she denies they yeah. even exist. She's like, that's right. not a thing. I think, I you think know. anybody should be able to deny anything they want to deny. I can think of a couple of things that deniers don't really, mm, mm, you don't want to be denying them. That's not a list you want to be on. No, I don't want to be on that list, but I just, I just want <laughs> to have, have like, right. a, like, I just want to have the same like tenacious ability to not like, 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 I don't want, like, I don't have an opinion about that. I'm good with it either way. Do you know? But like, my opinion is like, I don't, I'm not going to sleep with that person if I'm not into them, regardless of what, they're into or right, what they are. But, I mean, but, but what if your opinion was that person doesn't even exist? Oh, because that's, of how well, that's, I mean, I guess, ah, man, because you meet some people and they're like, and they're, they don't, you would feel like they think, yeah, like, do aliens exist? You're like, and the crazy part is this bitch fucking created Harry Potter and then she's one of the what's real largest what's series. Yeah. Of all I time. created an entire world of fiction, but I, I have an issue with this as being real or not real. Weird. I Weird. really liked the ride for that for that show. The ride at Disney that is show. unbelievable. Jeez. That yeah. Harry Potter I, ride I have show. a wand still from Universal. Uh, Sorry, what yeah, kind Universal. of wand is it? What kind of wand? Uh, I was like the one that like chooses me. Like oh, it was based on okay. my birthday. Oh. <laughs> That's so nice. Yeah. My, my son got one Back of those in the too. days when you could travel. <laughs> mm -hmm. Did you guys know nobody actually dies at Disney? They have some kind of clause that nobody's ever declared dead at Disney until sure. they get off the property. Okay, smart. Weird, weird, Jeez. weird shit. Like the kid that, even the kid that got eaten by the alligator for some reason. Uh, he died at yeah, the hospital. Until you leave the park. <laughs> did you know that Walt, did, did you know that Disney bought Pornhub? No, I didn't. Oh, really? <laughs> is, that, is that a bit you're working on, or is that real? It's it's a bit that I have on the internet, but uh, but it's but it is something that I read uh, because like they bought like Viacom or something, and Viacom owns uh, owns Pornhub, so there was a lineage to it, right? So it's true, it is true, and that's what happened. So, and then my joke about it is that they're diversifying their characters, and I go on about <laughs> you know the perverted things that I think about Disney characters, which after I thought about it. 
was quite a lot. <laughs> Isn't there hidden dicks in the background of all their movie titles and everything? <laughs> They're not really that hidden. They're not that hidden. No, they're not that hidden. <laughs> okay, Ben Men for a future one that he'll yeah, join I just up. Saw that. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Brent. Oh dear. Yes. I'm gonna get you to list three fast food chains. Go. My favorite ones, or like and the funniest ones. Out of time. Like. Uh. <laughs> my... It's called Five Seconds Go. <laughs> Just name the three you ate at today, Brett. Oh, Harvey's, <laughs> Wendy's, and Dairy Queen. Not in go. that order. Not in that order. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Emil knows how to trigger the left side of my brain. You see, David, I don't. I don't speak your language. I only speak mm. comedy. Yeah, that's my bad. <laughs> Wasn't Chick Fil A getting a bunch of slack over homophobia or something too? They, they yeah, were when I went there, and it was shit. so good. Yeah, they get a pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah fuck, it was good. good. I was like, they get a pass. Yeah, I was like, sorry, gay people or whatever. Like this chicken's fucking good. So Chick Fil A. Yeah. Chick-fil-A is dripping. They're definitely not dry, right? Oh, they're, my they're, God. They're not dry. <laughs> the meal I learned yesterday what dripping meant, like, for young people, the dripping is, like, their, it's clothing, it's good, it's dripping, and if it's bad, it's dry. But I didn't know. I, mean, I, I, I had not heard the dry part. Drip, I'm familiar with. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a venereal thing. That kids see. kids of a certain age would not know that. You and I would know that. Yeah. It's a uh, shot of penicillin. I don't think anybody's referred to it as the drip since like 1983. <laughs> right. Coming but back, I was like, making a comeback. Making a ah com <laughs> oh, comeback. Rough trade. Still funny, but rough trade. <laughs> Do you guys ever go to the clinic and have to get your uh, woohoo like checked out? Like, and they got to like put that little Roddy thing up there. You don't have to answer if it's uncomfortable for you. But me and my friends went to get that one time because one of them was feeling some burning sensations. And we went there and he went first and me and my other friend didn't go in. <laughs> we could hear him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like it's like going for the group tattoo, and when the first guy's in, the other people fucking leave. Definitely, oh, yeah. yeah. I have no tattoos. None. Yeah, I thought we were all getting dicks on our forearm. Oh, <laughs> just you, just you. You can turn into a Disney character. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Was there more to that story, Brent, or you were just there for support? Just for support, buddy. Just for support. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. A meal. I need you to list three things that you'd find in a purse. Go. Uh, lipstick, wallet, cell phone. Got it. Nice. There's like a song that's like, that's like keys, wallet, phone, something. Yeah. Do you know what that yeah. is? And they were saying they're going to remake it and make like keys, wallet, phone, mask. Bum, bum, bum. Like whatever that is. <laughs> oh, like, nice. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's part of my pocket check now, though. Like, it used mm -hmm. to be like, yeah, I've got my keys, I've got my wallet, I've yeah. got my phone. And now mask is another pat. Like, mm -hmm. it's really, it messed me up for a while, because it'd be like, it threw my rhythm off, because it'd almost be out the door. <laughs> yeah, and then you have to go back, because you forgot a mask. That's the worst when you <sighs> get somewhere, and then you have to turn around and go somewhere else, because you don't have a mask. Ugh. Yeah, that's stupid. I think everybody was doing it at the start, but now I've got so used to it now that I get home and I forget to take the mask off. Like I have the thing around my yeah. neck at home. You get home. I don't know. I'm getting used to it. I'm conforming. Conforming. Yeah. I'm not uh, an anti-masky person. My wife's in healthcare. I know the realities of the actual things that are happening. Even some people say they aren't, but I know like what's happening because I, our friends work in these places and stuff. And so, like, there's real things that are happening, but then there's also the response to it is also really shitty. <laughs> so it's like, it's like I know it's a true health concern without question. It is, but our response to it has not been great. And it's like, that's the challenge. And we're so Canadian that we're just like, we just want to like, well, let's have a little chat about it. But it's like, it's, it's weird. Yeah. Being locked down is a strange phenomenon. I don't know what to think at this point, what's really going on. Yeah. A lot of conspiracies and shit. Yeah, there's always a lot of conspiracies. I think that, like, like, not super conspiracy, but I think that it's, like, 
you know, when anything ever happens, you get to react to it and you choose how to react to it and based on your wants and the desires at the time. So it's like if, if people in certain political power positions have an ideal of something that they want or something that they have a vision for and then something happens and it looks like there's a way to get it by doing this, it's like, I don't think these things are like, oh, it's a conspiracy. It's like, no, this happened and then we responded to it this way instead of that way because of these things. And it's like, you can kind of, you know, follow it along and it's not so like, it's not so divisive. It's not, it's just like, well, you know, kind of like, I they, don't know. Like they used it for other purposes almost. Yeah, like, so like, like they not used it, it, but it's like it unfolded in a way and your belief system wants these things. You're like, well, you know, I could, you know, well, I can increase, you know, taxes or I could do this or do that because I can justify it because of this, because of that. Like there's all these weird things that seem to float around that normal people like us don't mm. have a say in or I read something really good today that um, that was a sentiment that I picked up a few weeks ago when I was getting frustrated with the political stuff, all the posting and stuff is too negative. And um, and this gentleman posted, he says, OK, so there's a new team in power now. Time to learn the new rules let's get ready for another great four years. And so like as an investor, which, you know, I'm an investor, you look at that, you go, that's the way to look at it. I don't care who's in power. I mean, I care, I don't want bad things to happen, but you're like, okay, this is what it is. These are the rules now, time to buy into some green fucking companies. You know, it's like, we're buying electric now, right? This is what we're doing for the next couple of years. I'm buying in and that's where we're going. And then, you know, and if it changes later and it's like, hey, we're putting that pipeline in now, great. Now I'm buying into coal, like I'm buying into oil, whatever. Like, you know, adjust with it. Don't stress about yeah. what's going on because I can't. I mean, I can make one vote, right? Mm. Well, and I think the biggest challenge, you know, with people who believe conspiracy theories is that collectively they're fucking retarded. <laughs> like this, the, that's the that's the big challenge. The like, it's not. Them. It's never real smart people who are like, yeah, I, totally. <laughs> there's the Illuminati's a thing. No, it's, it's stupid. Fucking people are believing that shit. You know that. But that goes back to what we were kind of talking about before we went live. Like, if people are getting their news from exclusively from Twitter and Facebook, mm -hmm. chances are they're a gullible piece of shit. Mm -hmm. And your but circle, Alex Jones. But your circle you know becomes these people that like. Like, if you're a dumb shit and then all your friends around you <laughs> dumb shit. become dumb shits because, like, that's what you're – that's like you all share the same sentiment. If you keep liking, you know, something, you keep liking it, well, then the people around you that like it become your, your little core. And if you watch your social media feed, you're like, oh, there's only really 15 people on there that I see on a regular because we all like – because we all like kung fu, because we all like investing, and because we all like comedy. There's my friends that are on my Facebook feed. And so I don't see anything other than their belief system, which is close to mine. Weird. I gotta feel like that's a, a, a pretty thin group, though. People don't like kung fu, comedy, and investing. There's only you, my other friend, <laughs> Mark. I do, Mark. <laughs> it is a thin group, buddy. I'm lonely. <laughs> do you guys buy into Alex Jones at all? No. no. Come on. You don't believe that the water's turning the frogs gay? Wait, what? I, what? I mean... Gay so listen, to this. listen, the, the frogs were born that way, buddy. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> That's a good one. But, uh, so you're saying when the frog, you're saying when the frog was an adolescent, he didn't get sat down and go like, "You have a choice to make. You like boy frogs or you like girl frogs." I mean, it's just the way it is. You're either into Miss Piggy, but then you're into Miss Piggy. What the fuck's that? That's not even your species. What is he? You know. But I still love him. Kermit's my favorite. So grade six, I had to do a project. This is like 1996. If you talk about touching your that. poop, I'm going to kick you out of here so fast. <laughs> the, uh, so the internet just came out, and I started doing this like pollution research, and it's on these frogs, and it's they're being <laughs> they're evolving with extra sex organs, extra eyes, and shit. Crazy, like pollution is fucking up a lot of a lot of the water uh, fucking animals. Man. And the frogs. This is a long time ago when it was happening, so. That's uh, I enjoyed crazy. that laugh. David and I laughed really hard. That was awesome. <laughs> I, I think my question is, how do you know the frogs are gay and that they're not just fucking girl frogs? Well, it's if they come on to you or not. <laughs> it's whether they wear chaps. <laughs> if they're wearing chaps, David, they're gay. <laughs> the research that I did was mostly like ex being extra organs, like <laughs> extra sex organs. And so like they were hermaphrodites, maybe not gay. Okay. Oh, okay. Maybe, I, I can see that, but 
Hey, I, all I'm them. saying is having both parts wouldn't be a bad thing. Not at all. Seriously. Like, you would have, like, so many more options. That's You'd be true. like... Especially if one can reach. Well, and you 100%. Got, you got both the pieces of equipment, and you know your way around both. You're you're winning your life. You're winning. Like, it's in. Like, like anybody that would say, like, oh, I don't want that, you're ridiculous. Man. <laughs> you could make your own baby. What? That baby would be weird, eh? That baby would be fucked oh, yeah. up right there. <laughs> Yeah, but we need to know. We got to see. <laughs> Whiskey Wednesdays is off the rails, David. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, we're not getting monetized on this one. We're not getting. <laughs> we might get sponsorship from, yeah. from some Maybe very so. odd people. I, I might have been able to choose a different word when describing the people who. Uh, <laughs> like conspiracies. <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry about that, fellas. <laughs> tell, tell me how you really feel, buddy. We'll, we'll tell me how you really those. feel. I buy into the frog, but that's all I buy into. Yeah. Uh, so I just, um, um, this week, this Thursday, I have a uh, Zoom comedy show, which Emil was expressing how much fun those are. And um, I won't be on it is what Brent's saying. Yeah, Emil won't be on this one. But uh, um, it's, been an, it's been an interesting um, trajectory because for me, Emil, like, um, how long have you been doing comedy, Emil? Uh, it'll be two years in February, but you got to probably wipe six months out of that because we've had to sit at home like assholes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay. so let's, let's say 18 months shortly here. Okay, okay. We're on similar time frames then because I'm like a year. I'm at like nine months right now. So you're like double my time frame, but I mean more or less in the same same frame but so like i got started and then it was over right like you know i did like a month of comedy um i did one open mic in ottawa that that's where you and i met at that um yep um naked cat fluffy kitty a meow that's hot meow that's hot that's what it was you were close you were in the yeah. neighborhood great yeah. guys by the way the folks that run that joint are fantastic they were fucking awesome that place was like for one the bathrooms were clean as fuck I mean, in a, in a place to do comedy and the place was clean. I mean, it was tidy. And I was like, this place is nice. And my wife came and we sat and we had drinks at that bar and she was so nice to us, that lady that runs it. Yeah, it was great. I love that spot. Yeah. I thought you were about to say your wife was so nice to you. <laughs> my wife, she was very nice to me. Yeah, she like good. helped film the thing and, and um, I got to do my one and only comedy anything in Canada at that spot with you that night. And it was awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, it's crazy. You did your special here too. What's that? You did your special in Canada. That was that was later. Like that was later. Like that was the before like everything closed. Yeah. Everything, yeah. March twelfth, Emil. That's when that was. I just heard from the was the the, 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 the producers in your ear. Let yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. March twelfth was that uh, was when we did. That was the last for comedy, and then it was like, it was like over, yeah. right? Like. Well, yeah. The world like shut yeah. down on St. Patrick's Day. It was like yeah, and uh, Ottawa reopened comedy in. July. Yeah. We got a green light to reopen spaces and we ran really well until October and then they shut it down again. Um, and then we got back to sort of December and then shut it down 3.0. Yeah. I wish I came down and, and hung out with some comedians and did some stuff in July in the summer and stuff in Ottawa. We had already moved back to Cambridge and life was upside down and backwards and I was trying to figure this well, stuff out. Well, it's a bit out. of a hike too, right? Between it's not like quite like darting back to Toronto. You're yeah. you're tacking on the extra four hours. And, yeah, uh, it's a, it's, it's, a it's not quite as leisurely a jaunt. No, no. So, but yeah, so it was like, but yeah, that was the only spot I got to do there, and then I started just doing Zoom shows because all the all my friends that I made when I was away learning how to do comedy were all on Zoom because LA. In California was shut down like really shut down like we are now and they've been shut down that way the whole time so they're just zoom comedy shows all the time every day um, and uh, and the guy that I hooked up with down there uh, learning how to do comedy was that fan and he's been running this like he, I think he has 600 comics now that are like in his platform that he chooses from to do shows every that's cool. Yeah, every two, like he does shows almost every night. I think Mondays is the only night he doesn't do a show. Um, and I've been so fortunate that I was like, 
there from the very first time he did that. So then I kind of like, I'm in this like original crew of people that were there and we really kind of just, you know, I mean, dude, it was just like in Ottawa, downtown, living in that fucking apartment, tiny little apartment, the pools. I mean, this is okay. This, I know I shouldn't be a pity party, but the pool's closed. The gym's closed. The sauna's closed. Everything's closed. And like, so you can't do anything fun. And you're just in this little apartment and just doing zoom shows every day. And I was just like, this is, this is, it's weird that you added the gym to part of the fun list. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's nice to know it's available. I don't need to use it, but yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah exactly. You know, it's nice like, to know it's there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, how was July up to October? Did you get lots of shows in? It was, it was great. Yeah. yeah, it was super good. And you know, um, everybody came back with a vengeance. And um, Yuck Yucks was actually for a stretch running seven days a week. Wow. Um, so they were using, they kind of retooled the schedule and. Um, they were doing Sunday, Monday, Tuesday as their, their new talent showcase and launching pad shows. Yep. And then Wednesday would be Trevor's pad for, he had, instead of doing like two Sundays a month, he was doing every Wednesday for the first month back. Okay. Um, and then the Thursday through Sunday would be, or Thursday through Saturday would be your standard club headliner show. Um, you yep. know, so it, they were, they were back running and they were doing great. I don't, I don't think any cases came from any of the places that were either a dedicated comedy venues or b places that were hosting indie shows. Okay. Um, so um, everybody was running a tight ship. Everybody had their cleaning protocols in place. Everybody was running multiple mics. Yeah. Um, distancing, limited, um, limited capacity shows, and uh, I don't know uh, what it was like where you guys were doing it, but in Ottawa, everybody put up uh, plexiglass shields okay um, we didn't in front of the we, stage we, we we just made it like instead of six feet we made it like eight nine feet away like we just made it yeah. really far away and we didn't do plexi but like we would if we needed to like fill but we our capacity was so low that we right. had all this space that we're like let's just back it up and then we didn't we didn't do the plexi or anything it's you know that works you know yeah but budget. like they did everything they possibly could they did everything right um you literally couldn't even go to these places and like stand by the bar because everywhere yeah. is like the requirement was seating. Yeah. And if you walked up to the bar and were standing there for any more than 10 seconds, staff would come over and be like, listen, I need you to sit down. Yeah. Uh, and everybody was really cool about it. And uh, unfortunately, we just kind of got dragged into the, the, the selfish, stupid behavior of other people, which is normally yeah. how the world happens. Yeah. Yeah. Who's there was a guy there that night that, uh, that I met you and, um, he lives in Kingston. Uh, I can try to remember his name right now. He's a single dad. Jeff Nixon. Jeff. Fuck Jeff that guy's Nixon. nice. I don't know. Like I don't know a lot of people. Like I just he's a nice guy. Like yeah, I yeah. haven't seen much of his comedy or whatever. But like he posts all the time. I like follow that guy. He follows me back. Same as you. Thank his you for following everything really we've been doing. It's pretty funny. His crowd works good. Is that what he said? Yeah, it's yeah. really funny. I like that guy, Jeff Nixon. Shout out Jeff <laughs> Nixon from Whiskey Wednesdays. <clears throat> and uh, when he doesn't have his kids, he he will go any distance for a five minute spot yeah, or seven yeah. minute spot. Yeah. Like it's not yeah. uncommon for him to drive to Ottawa yeah. on you know a weekday night yeah. to get time from Kingston. Um, yeah. You know, and yeah, yeah. head back right after the shows. So Kingston, you know, like he's uh, he's super into it. Yeah. No, I'm gonna get that guy at Silly Side TV as soon as we have when we're allowed to have an audience again. And um, whenever that happens, I'm going to be right on that guy. Yeah, I, I like his energy. There's certain people you meet and you're just like, I like that guy. I like Spencer too. That Spence guy that like runs that Spence show. Spence is a character. He's, He's fucking great. hilarious, buddy. That guy is so much fun. So this guy yeah. like Spencer is just like this. He's kind of like this. I don't know, Spencer, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I love you, man. But like, he's like this dorky kind of guy. And he's like, he's just, he's, he's, he's like a combination of like, Jack Black, but like into Pokemon in a weird way. Like, I don't know how to describe him, but I like that yeah, guy a lot. Like, imagine That's if any one visual. of the characters on Big Bang Theory was funny. That's yeah. If, if if yeah, if somebody on <laughs> right. Big Bang Theory was funny, that would be that is so true. Ah, uh, yeah, that guy. So yeah, that guy's awesome. Um, because he got me on that one little show that we got to do, which was fucking awesome. Oh, that uh, you know, I'm so glad I recorded it because. It was the only show that ever happened. And it was like, and then it was gone. And it was the only show my wife saw me do 
which was a justification to like do all these like run around do these things whatever you know everything we're doing now is like that was the justification for it if that night went shitty I'd probably be like selling real estate right now in Florida or something. I don't know what I'd be doing. <laughs> so she's not the ex-wife we're talking about then, right? No, she, no, no, no. She's not, the current wife. Yeah, she's the current okay. wife. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that the taping went well. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah. She's the winner. Or I am. So I don't know. It's hard to tell. It's, every day is different. <laughs> what do you do otherwise, uh, Emil? Uh, I am in a very... Uh, a industry that's doing super well right now. I am in the hotel business. Uh, <laughs> that is the appropriate face. It is in the fucking toilet. Oh man. If you're not housing refugees, you got nobody in there. That's pretty accurate. Uh, it's a lot of, it's a lot of that. Um, being Ottawa, you're still getting a little bit of, uh, um, government stuff, but, yeah. uh, picking, pickings are slim, man. There's, uh, a lot of people have eaten a lot of shit over the last nine months. There's, there's good deals on hotel rooms right now in Ottawa. They're, they're, well, they're trying to dissuade people from even traveling for that. Like, I know. Truthfully, when, uh, when only part of the province was shut down, like when they shut down Toronto and Montreal, yeah. we actually saw a huge influx of people yeah. from both. Yeah. Um, like the two weeks before Christmas, the byword market was packed. The malls were packed. Like it was bananas. And then our cases started going up because yeah. everybody's mm. bringing their shit here yep. and all that yep. jazz. So yep. um, that's kind of the problem when people are like, Oh, I can't believe they shut down everywhere. My home doesn't have that. And whatever. It's like, yeah, because when they shut down the people in other places, <laughs> they get moving, they yep. get mobile and that's yep. how this shit spirals yeah, yeah. and gets the out virus of control, is only so. for poor people. Rich, right, rich people don't matter. We just move. We just go. Oh, oh that's, oh, yeah. it, that's it. There's no COVID at the key at the ski resort this weekend. We're going there off to Quebec. Holy fuck. Blah, 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 right? The little the little park hills here. You go by them, and there's like a thousand kids tobogganing and shit. You look over, and you're just like, cool. I guess it doesn't happen outside doesn't. anyway. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. There's planes flying. I heard somebody in. say that. I heard someone say that you can't get COVID outside. And I was like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> wow. Well, I, I mean, don't make out with people that have COVID. I mean, that's pretty much it, right? Like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. COVID's basically like mono was in high school. <laughs> right? Right? Oh my goodness. What somebody gets it, everyone gets it. I caught mono in high school. <laughs> Fucking brutal. Uh, did you have did you say you had mono in high school? Yeah. Oh, Last like four guy. months. Ugh. Fucking four months. Months. My like my gland was like swollen out, fucking oh, huge. Yeah, it was weird. terrible. Pass it on to one of my sister's friends. I thought you said one of your sisters. I'm glad yeah, you said that friends with this. Friends. Yeah, that's comedy time here. There, I pass on one of my sisters. Friends. Friends. Yeah. <laughs> you're Just, you're the person that Pornhub's catering their their content to. Oh, yeah. God, yeah, God, God so really much popular. brother and sister. What the it's fuck? So I'm not into this. I don't. I mean, I like the pictures, but I don't like the words. It's very weird. You got to take the subtitles and the sound off. And then, sorry. My executive producers yelled out, your sisters are lesbians. What does that have to do with this conversation? <laughs> That's fair. Thank you. Thank you for telling me that. That's, And they are. And they're lovely. And they're, I guess I thought it was funny. It is funny. I love gay people. And my sisters. My dad was gay. One of, one of my fathers was gay. Yeah. It's a lot on Whiskey Wednesday. You start drinking. You start dropping all your secrets. So what you're saying is you were the child of a frog. Yeah, like my, my father my father had multiple personality disorder. He had like seventeen people living in his brain. And um oh, that's so, tough though. If that's if that's real, that's tough. That's real, yeah. And some of them were gay and some of them were straight, Fuck. and some of them were men and some were women. It was you didn't know what you were gonna get on any given day. I'm good at crowd work. Did he train did he change voices with characters? <laughs> did he ever change outfits? Sometimes he wore a dress because Oh no, eh? Hey. Oh, wow. Ugh. Good times, Jeez. buddy. What yeah. was it like navigating that when you were younger? When I was soup, I didn't get sent to live with him until I was about 14. And I didn't know him until then. So at a perfect adolescent age, I got sent to live with this bizarre lunatic. And, um, <laughs> and most of the time, it was just extraordinarily uncomfortable because I wasn't raised with the idea that, like, a man wearing a dress was cool or, like, whatever, right? So, like, so then, like, you know, parent-teacher interviews were fucking weird. Holy fuck. But it probably opened up your mind to other lifestyles and how people live and, and probably met, threw a sliver worth of empathy into your life. I've met a ton of 
people that I wouldn't have met otherwise that are loving, caring, awesome people that I value like more than like you would imagine that are like that other people might look at and go like, well, why the fuck would like, don't fuck with that guy or don't fuck with that girl or that whatever they are. Like, you know, like, so it's like, so yeah, like that's like, you learn that like people are people. They're not like, hundred percent. you know, that, you know, so it's like, I feel like when I do my crazy comedy bits or whatever about whatever I'm doing, did we lose a camera? I think we might have. We lost a camera. This yeah, is live, yeah, people. Yeah, you, you just barely got us. <laughs> WKRP <laughs> in Cincinnati. I got that right. What? Oh, oh but it holds up. I am telling you, it holds up. <laughs> Fuck, I love that. It's Les Nessman with the news. Yeah, five yeah. five time uh, award winning. Five Les time Nessman. award Thanks winning. Very much. Uh, it's the great turkey drop. My mom put that up not too long ago for the U.S. Dude, first. Dude, that episode's from season one. Oh man. my god! That's how like that's how good that show was. That People was, don't even know what we're talking like about. Episode right now. three or yeah. some shit. And no idea. Man, <laughs> it holds up. You know what other show I rewatched uh, not too long ago um, that also really held up was Cheers. Yes, Cheers. Uh, like Ernie Pantuso, coach might be one of the coach, great yep. characters <laughs> in television history. Yeah, yeah. I liked it when I Coach and Elf. Woody were together. When what was Co- that? I liked Coach and Woody, the way they yep. were together, like the way that he was like, you know, like he was coaching him, like the way he was like, you know, telling Woody what to do all the time. I liked that. I liked that a lot. I was, was watching uh, the, it was uh, an all-time classic. The old elf was really good. That little guy had some good lines. Somebody was writing his jokes for him pretty good. <laughs> uh, one of the other ones that held up from like the early 90s was uh, Married with Children. Classic. Love so many devastating marriage, fucking one-liners. It's unbelievable. Uh, the girl from that show, Love and Marriage, what's her name? Don't look at me. I'm Abigail. looking at David. He was homeschooled. Yeah, he doesn't know the fuck. Would, the, no, not the mom. The mom. The mom. Christina Applegate? The daughter. Christina Applegate? Man. Hello. Whew. Even Amazing. now still. She is hot. The, the daughter from the Love and Marriage show. And the mom, and uh, she did that motorcycle show, the uh, Sons, yeah, of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy. And she was yeah. fucking dynamite. She was really good in that show. Yeah, she's holding up good, too. Yeah. Dynamite. Yeah, she has that yeah, rough, would... rough stripper look, that rough, old, haggard, still tits that stand up straight stripper look. The big scar between her tits there, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, poor thing. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I like her. But Christina Applegate, hello. <laughs> yeah, my dad would always, uh, after my mom would go to bed, my dad would sneak me down to watch Married with Children with okay. him. Okay. And I'd have to pretend like I didn't get all the big tit jokes and all that. Right, uh, yeah, yeah. Ah, cover my <laughs> eyes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a good show, really good show. I don't even... Uh, it would be pretty offensive nowadays. They yeah. Have it on. Oh, people would have hurt it's feelings half for the sure. stuff they did in like '90s television. They can't do now. Yeah. Like <laughs> none of it. You can't even do Will and Grace now. Yeah. <laughs> I Brandy feel like you might about... still be able to get away with Will and Grace. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> but they need some. Like they, they would need to. Like they would need to darken up the cast a little bit. It's a bit. It's a bit whitewashed. They would have to. They would if they yeah if they right? rebooted it a second time they yeah. might uh, yeah they might need a little more diversity yeah yeah I got hooked on watching these old public service announcements from like the fifties <laughs> and sixties right it's like back then homosexuality was like a disease yeah <laughs> uh, con- you gotta go get fixed you gotta go to the thing yeah Conversion every camp. you're a predator and uh, it was crazy. And even if in this in this one case, this kid that was assaulted, he got charged and was put on probation after for being the being the assaultee after he right. was molested by the guy. Wow. Yeah, I weird. Mean, how weird was he dressed? Slow What's down. That? I got to unpack it. How was he dressed? Was he wearing short shorts? Uh, was it jean shorts? Short with the shorts. Was he wearing khakis? Really I mean, if you're wearing khakis, that's kind of hot. That, uh, I mean, with the pockets, all the extra pockets. <laughs> I mean, how can I not get excited? I don't. <laughs> Put a lot of trinkets in there. Yeah. Trinkets? What are trinkets? This is ridiculous. <laughs> Whiskey Wednesday, boys. This is nice. 
What, what happened oh, yeah. to McKay? Did That's he, a good uh, hang. Uh, yeah, no, he's coming through next time. Next time. He's going to pass through next time? All right. Yeah. Yeah, he said he's busy tonight, but he meant like the next Shout time. out to Peter McKay's son, Ben McKay. I made that up. I don't know who Peter McKay is. Yeah, I, I, think he's like Peter the, I think he's the progressive conservative guy that lost is Peter McKay, I think. He lost to um, O'Toole, who had won the... He's going to be in charge of those people, whoever they are. The racists? The are. racists. He's going to be in charge of the racists, <laughs> apparently. I didn't like that just, they... Uh, just the Alberta racists. The rest just, of the country is on their own. I lived in Alberta for a number of years, and I'll tell you one thing. Um, I want to say they're not racist. <laughs> they're just like... <laughs> they're just behind. They're like 10 years behind us on everything. It's like the internet slows down and like they just don't get the news yet. And that's just, they're just, they're, they're as good as anybody. COVID has I lived yet. out there for a number of years. I love those people. I worked out there. I had great experiences. I rode horses. It was amazing. Um, I just watched a show about horses. What was it called? Uh, Are the people of Alberta at least okay with the horses being black? Yeah. <laughs> Yellowstone. <laughs> Yellowstone had black horses, brown horses, yellow horses, and had all the different. It actually had no white horses, which I've noticed lately. A lot of shows don't have white horses. They have all the other horses, but they're missing out. Like there's an L G B T Q plus now, which I thought was for big people, but now it's for something else that I'm learning about. But I thought it was for plus bigger people, and I was like, bigger people need love too. But then I was like, why the fuck do they get all the letters? Where's the S's? Where's the straights? And, and if I was like, if I was going to divide them, I'd be like, you can have the L. You got the L. You got the G. You got the G. You got the L. The T's kind of belong with us. I want the T's with the S's. I think the T's and S's go together. I'd like to hang with the T's. So, um, and then we got the Q's. Well, the Q's can go with the, well, like the, the Q's should just kind of go. No, no, the themselves. Q's can go with no. The Q's can goes with the les with the L's and the and the yeah yeah they can go over there. But we get the we get the S and the T's. Now we get the pluses because now it's equal. So we get the pluses. I think it'd be nice if they just started in with the vowels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, A E I O U, and you know sometimes Y, but not always. There you, there's the questioning right there. Sometimes Y. Sometimes Y because it's dark. Hole's a hole. What are we gonna do? <laughs> Dark. Oh, dark. Everybody's so judgy. Oh, boy. Yeah, so we're all either just having a whole bill. <laughs> Whiskey Wednesdays at Silly Side TV. This could be the end of all of our careers in one episode. Uh, yeah. Done. <laughs> Done. Oh, it's going to be tough for me to throw away that 50 bucks a year I'm making on comedy right now. <laughs> <laughs> be tough to, tough to let that slide away. Yeah, let that go. Oh, yeah. How did we even get on this? We were doing a game. We, we were, were about... doing a game. We made it like one round. We, we made could, one we round. Could, we could go back to the game if you want. Uh, or we could just stay where we are. Did I, did I win, though? Uh, I, you were winning. You were winning. There, there you go. He had an extra turn, though. Crown, crown me the champion did. of Whiskey Wednesday. <laughs> yes. Uh, <clears throat> somebody sent out a plaque to Emil saying Whiskey Wednesday's Whiskey champion. Wednesday. Comedy meant whatever. Make it sound really good, so yeah. you can put it on his IMDb. Can it be made out of plastic? It's a credit. It counts. Yeah, it's a credit. It counts. It's like um, uh, print it with the we'll print. print it with the digital printer thing. The thing that prints. The, what's the that 3D called? Printer. 3D printer. Yeah. Print it with a 3D yeah. printer. Yeah. And we need a 3D printer sponsor at Silly Side TV, by the way. And the Zoom sponsor. Let's get a Zoom sponsor first, yeah. then we can get Zoom 3D sponsor. printer hey, sponsor. Hey, we've, been on, we've been going for like an hour. I don't think we need a Zoom we anything. I think one, we've yeah. got it figured. We, I think yeah, we we're going to all right. Yeah, like we just do it until they say we can't anymore. What's the Zoom sponsor? Just free Zoom? Yeah, we just want somebody to pay $20 a month so we have Zoom. <laughs> so we can do more shows. But until then, if we get kicked out, we'll just go, hey, Emil... And Adam, do you mind if we call you back in a minute? And you'll be like, no, Brad, don't call me back. I don't want any part of you ever again. I, just, I, I, feel, I, I feel remiss that I even ever liked one of your things. And now it led to this. I, I try to support the cause. I try, to, I try to like everybody's posts all the time. Me too. Which makes all the likes you gave me feel way less worthful now. Well, they're still working towards still the algorithm, likes, yeah. man. They count. 
Yeah, that's uh, true. I don't know why more people don't just fucking like and comment and fucking share. Like, what the fuck? Is, why are you so fucking conservative with your goddamn liking and sharing? I like <laughs> and share, and when I'm at a comedy show, you know what I do? I fucking laugh because I'm there to laugh. I don't give a fuck. Even if you don't make me laugh, if I think of something funny while you're saying words, I'm going to laugh because that's what I'm there for. Sorry, I got to get that out. <laughs> the it's contagious, too. Gets other people laughing too. Get the, it's the whiskey talking. Yeah. You see these fucking asshole comics. They all they go to the they have arms fucking crossed, just waiting, like, daring you. I dare you to make me laugh. You can't. You can't make me laugh no matter what I do. And I'm like, you're right. I can't. I'm not even going to try. I wish I never started comedy. <laughs> Fuck you. So are we going back to the game? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it was. That was a mighty long pause. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was uh, Adam's turn, right? Yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah, I think it was Adam. Adam. I can't believe one of you was keeping track. Yeah, we're trying. We're doing our best. Adam, I need you to list three phone brands. Go. Uh, Fido, Telus, uh, Rogers. Adam did not phones? understand the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are providers. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it to him. Phones. I'll give it to him. Oh, okay, no, okay. The phones, like, you know. LG, yeah. shit like that. Samsung, Blackberry, whatever, yeah. Okay. Don't, Don't say well, those ones. Different ones. Two. Sony, Frigidaire, whatever. Frigidaire. <laughs> is, that a, is that a phone company? I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a fridge company. Really? It's for cool conversations. Bennett. You want to hit me another question, or did I lose that one? Uh, I think you got that one, but it's Bennett's turn. Yeah. Bennett, list yeah. three things that in your bedroom. Go. A mirror, a dresser, and a box oh. of tissues. The correct answer ah, is what I'm disappointment and embarrassment. <laughs> a box of tissues. A mirror and a box of tissues. What's going on at Bennett's house? <laughs> Oh my goodness, disgusting. And your girlfriend's making you peanut weird. butter martinis? What are you having over peanut there? <laughs> Fucking peanut butter martinis. <laughs> Apple and moonshine. Apple the neck moonshine. The giraffe's going to look pretty good by the time you're done. Uh, I can't wait until we can have like a company Christmas party where everybody gets to come. And because I'm not a friggin' asshole, I'm going to invite like everybody, including their spouses. And like, because I went to a Christmas party recently, a year ago, and they didn't invite spouses. And it was so weird because they invited all, no spouses. And then they said, okay, first they gave us a big sexual discrimination bullshit fucking thing. And then they put us all in a room. They got a DJ and an open bar. And they're like, don't fucking touch each other. And I'm like, I'm not going to touch anybody. I'm good, man. Like, why, why are you talking to me? And then, like, it's nothing but 47-year-old and... 39 year old women that haven't been out of the house since prom and they're like they got the same prom dress on but it's all falling out and they're just like grabbing you like fucking vultures and you're just like ladies just leave me alone i like the, didn't you read the thing so but i'm gonna have a real good christmas party where you can bring your spouses and it's gonna be fun and normal and happy and you can grab up on the person you brought instead of grabbing up on fucking strangers <laughs> With that in mind, um, Brent, list three oceans. Go. Three oceans. Mm -hmm. uh, Billy Ocean. <laughs> Billy, <laughs> Billy. Um, it counts. The, it fucking counts. It counts. Uh, uh, what's uh, ocean? Yeah, the five seconds. Are, uh, wait a second. Just slow down. You're counting too quickly. No, five I seconds. <laughs> I'm a comedian. I get five minutes minimum. You light me at four. <laughs> the fuck is this fucking five second bullshit? What other oceans are there? What other oceans are there? There's the Atlantic Ocean. There's the Pacific Ocean. Don't answer for me. <laughs> you should have gone with Danny Ocean and Ocean Spray, bud. Ocean Spray. Ocean 11? I would have counted. Ocean's that. 11, Ocean's 12, Ocean and Ocean 12, 10. Ocean 13. Oh, fuck, man. Brad Pitt is handsome. I don't care what side of the fence you're on. Brad Pitt is fucking handsome. He is. And the guy Accurate. that 
The guy that looks like him, the guy that like walks around that's got like the Brad Pitt hair and he's like a street person, fuck that guy. Brad Pitt <laughs> is handsome. Yeah. I once What post- street are you living on that, that ha- that's a thing? I live on Queen Street. Um what? <laughs> Because the, the homeless people in Ottawa don't look like Brad Pitt. No, they do. I lived in the Byward Market. They do not. I didn't want to see a guy that looked anything like Brad Pitt. So yeah. Disappointing. Yeah. A couple look like Angela Jolie. Fucking crackheads. But, yeah. But no, uh, <laughs> no, uh, no Brad Pitt. You know what I did once, Emil, which is a funny story to me and not to many other people, is uh, <laughs> I own this little, this little restaurant. And, uh, and at one point, there were filming. There was a filming crew around my neighborhood. And I Googled, like, Brad Pitt for some reason that day. And I found a picture of Brad Pitt drinking the kind of beer that I, that I sold in my bar. And I was the only bar that ever sold it. So, like, um, I posted a picture of Brad Pitt drinking this beer. And then for the rest of the fucking two days was people coming into my restaurant going, is Brad Pitt here? Is he, when was he here? Was he coming back? Is he, where's Brad Pitt? That's and, like, funny. it was hilarious for me. That's but, marketing, baby. Yeah. People came in. Looking for Brad Pitt. We did have who was here? Who left their umbrella here? Some Franco. James Franco forgot his umbrella in my office. <laughs> so James Franco, fuck you and your smart ass working at New York fucking library, where the fuck you do reading books, whatever you do. Fuck that guy. James Franco. <laughs> fuck James Franco. And I got your umbrella, bitch. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can't come get it. You, well, if you came here, I'd give it to you. I'm Canadian. What, well, I'm going to say no? I'd be like, James, I kept your umbrella. I used it three times. I'm sorry. Here it is. We should sell it. We should sell he James come Franco. come on the podcast if he wants it back up. Yeah. Him and that, uh, <laughs> what's that fucking guy that looks like my son? That uh, is comedian? Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. James Franco's friend, Seth, Seth Rogen. He's Canadian. <laughs> Super pumped that you didn't just say uh, Pete Davidson there. Pete Davidson. <laughs> he, do you like Pete Davidson? What's your opinion about Pete I, Davidson? Uh, he, I, yeah. he's not for me. I don't, I don't love his work. To be perfectly yeah. honest. Um, do you think he's milking his dead dad a little much? Uh, it's, it's his only relevant material. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I didn't love his last special. I didn't. Uh, I didn't think the the movie he did recently was uh, all that great. But yeah. uh, what the fuck do I know? Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm an I'm an open mic comedian. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he came out of the Saturday Night Live crew, right? Like he's one of the very well. Few... He's still there. Yeah, he's still oh, doing. He still it. There. Okay. I don't see yeah. much of his work there. I guess they don't put many of his skits up. Well, it's, they don't. They don't use him a, a ton. Part of it is like Lauren Michaels loves him. Like right. he, he's almost like a father to like. Oh, okay. He kind of have to be, like, wouldn't he? If it sends... Yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's. I I like the stuff Pete Davidson puts out, but like it's. I think no, it's hit or miss. Like I feel like it either lands super well or it just bombs and, with him. Like there's I no mean, in between. Comedy is a funny subjective thing. Like there are a lot of comedians that. I think are kind of fringe popularity that I think are really funny. And there's, there's people that are super popular that I don't necessarily get. Like the, the level of popularity that Burt Kreischer has right now is off the charts. And I gotta be honest, I don't get his shit at all. Like, you know, and I, like I, even his podcast with Tom Segura is like enormously popular and I love Tom Segura's material and work, but like the two of them together, I make it like 10 minutes through before just even the shrillness of Bert Kreischer's voice and laugh. Two bears, one funny guy. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's at least two bears, bears, one funny bear. Again. One this funny guy's bear. playing sold yeah. out shows and making yeah. shit tons of money. And yeah. I'm do, an asshole sitting in yes, his kitchen on a the podcast. Machine, so. Do the machine. <laughs> ah, do the same fucking bit over and over again. Boring. Uh, yeah. But he has a lot of good guests. He's got a good group of comedy, like comedian friends. He's a he's a like, Roganite. Yeah, like so Big J has, Oakerson and all those the, guys. All the, he has that access to that whole network. It's like a, their own mm-hmm. little private club, which is great. It's, uh, gonna, it's a pretty good network to have access to, though. Fuck yeah. I, mean, yeah. I didn't say I didn't want in it. I'm like, I'm going. 
I mean, I'm looking at property in Austin. Dave and I were just talking about for the yeah. podcast. We're like, well, if we're going to get a place in the States, it probably should be in Texas. David is like, David seems like this shy, cute, quiet, little like <laughs> producer guy behind the thing. But he's like, an, a, like I'm just not just some guy, right? Like I know things, right? Like he has a voice that's like a combination of Fergie and Jesus. <laughs> So like David's going places. So if even if I fail as an artist, as long as I got him on a fucking 20, 80-20 deal or whatever it is, I'm fucking set for life. Like I'm looking at new Bentleys, right? I'm looking at, I'm shopping. I'm out looking at purses and sorry, man bags, whatever. I'm looking. I'm out there fucking looking at shit because I'm like. David is going to pay off whether he just produces one of my winning shows, finds one of an amazing comic and get built a special around whatever, whatever David does, we're going to make money as long as we keep him under our leash. So that's what we're doing. (laughs) Sorry. You had to be part of that. Emil. I didn't mean you to be part of that big (laughs) business talk, but it's It's all good. (laughs) Emil, have you done any American gigs or you just been in Canada doing it? Uh, one, one small one. Um, I did uh, a, a, like an amateur night at uh, a, a helium club in Buffalo, um, and it was so <laughs> it was so poorly attended that uh, <laughs> when I was there, they were like, "Okay, we were originally going to give you guys five minutes. Now it's going to be three. We just want to fucking wrap this up and go home." Yeah. Um, but it was it was fun. You know, it's always good to do it like wherever you can. I was in Europe, uh, the summer before last. Um, and, and I tried to see what the scene was like in Europe to see if I could go up anywhere, just whatever. But, uh, it's surprisingly not as big a thing in a lot of big cities in Europe. Uh, and the places it is, isn't in English language, or if they are doing it in English language, they're charging a premium to customers. So they're like, we don't really want anybody that's pretty new. Um, so, eh, that's my, my limited oh, international God. experience is, uh, is an amateur night in Buffalo, New York. Yeah. Uh, Brent, did you notice, like, when you were in the States, was there a difference in the audience, like a Canadian audience and American audience? Yes, 100%. Any more hecklers or? Yeah, so many more hecklers. Brent, Brent left. I'm not really sure where he went. So oh, Brent, shit. Brent, yeah. <laughs> Didn't know he was gone. Yeah, he'll be back, I uh, think. So did you hear about, so like the, uh, I don't know if any of you guys have watched Tiger King, like because yeah, yeah. Three during yeah. the beginning of COVID. Um, so he was so certain that he was going to get one of those presidential so pardons yesterday that he had a limo like waiting outside of the prison for him. Like, and they let the gangster rappers out, but they didn't let uh, Joe Exotic out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, like I, I, saw many- that and I was killing myself laughing. Like it was just. I'm surprised. Carol I wonder how he uh, got up the commissary money to get that uh, limo rented, or who he had to blow to get it there. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm sure Netflix threw a few production dollars at that because you know, mm. if they if he gets out and they can film that as an extra episode, they oh, cash yeah. in oh, yeah. on all the bullshit that's associated with it. So uh, for them, it was probably just the cost of renting a limo for an afternoon and and having a camera crew ready if they needed and. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably worth taking a flyer on it based on Actually, what a ridiculous sensation that fucking show was when <laughs> when lockdown started. Yeah. yeah, Netflix has no shame. They'll pull it out anything people want to watch. Yeah, that's the best thing. That's the, it's a business, man. That's the name of the game. Is uh, oh, yeah. you know, If people were willing to watch it and, and buy subscriptions, then throw it on, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's a great time to like be a writer, right? Like a screenwriter or whatever is like with all these streaming services is you have a way higher chance of getting it produced and getting some money for it than uh, like back in the day when you had to like try and push to like ABC or like one of those. Yeah. I see a lot of low budget movies that uh, I wonder like who's investing in these fucking movies. Like who's putting the money into them because they're so bad. But yeah. uh, yeah, I love love a good bad movie. So like it's it's so good. (laughs) I got like 15 minutes through that uh, Pete Davidson movie, and I was only watching it because I heard Bill Burr was in it, but I couldn't even, yeah, I got 15, 20 minutes in, and I couldn't do it. It's a super long movie as well. What's it called? Oh, yeah. This is King of Staten uh, King Island. King of Staten Island, yeah. yeah. Oh. In addition to being dog shit, it's like two hours and 40 minutes, <laughs> yeah. I think. 
Yeah, it's I, I haven't watched it yet. It's on my list to like try and go through, but it's. Uh, yeah, the first video, he made a, a few, like, good mental health jokes and, uh, you know, a bit of dark stuff. But then, yeah, I couldn't uh, sit through too much. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's a very niche style of comedy he has, for sure. Like, it's uh, it's interesting. It's, like, just even see, like, it, it, it is nice, though, to see somebody like that on a show like SNL, though, right? Like, that they're not like, oh, bye. Is he uh, yeah, you think being, he's like being good looking, crowd? clean, or funny is not a requirement of Saturday Night Live anymore? No, exactly. Uh, which is great for a lot of people. Yeah, he looks <laughs> like he lives in his fucking car. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I said two hours and 45 minutes. IMDb says it's two hours and 16 minutes. So still you still got two hours left of it, Adam. Good luck with that. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> But his says uh, stand up special wasn't any better, right? Eh? I didn't think so, man. He had he had one like at the very start of it. He chisels uh, Louis C.K. about being a narc when he hosted uh, Saturday Night Live, um, mm. and it's pretty funny. Go apparently Louis C.K. went to uh, went to Lauren and was like, "This guy smokes pot way too much," <laughs> and I heard something basically narc narked him out and. Uh, He's got a, a little bit of funny chatter about that, but other than that, like I didn't think it was great to be honest. It, what's uh, what's too much pot? I'm confused. <laughs> well, the, right. Well, that's and that's the thing, right? And yeah. and even even if there is such a thing, it's not really for anybody else to decide. Mm. Yeah. As long as you're getting the job done, I think then it shouldn't really that's, matter, right? That's it, bud. So Brent, I was asking when you were gone there. Um, did you find a different a difference from the American audiences and the Canadian? Like more hecklers um, in America? Canadian? I would say that, I mean, because I haven't had a chance to do any Canadian comedy or only done American comedy. Um, oh, your whole time was out there, right? Eh? Yeah, like I only did two shows. Well, maybe four or five shows. Maybe I've done five shows in Canada um, since I started, so... But three of those shows were in my own space where I own the space. So it's mm-hmm. kind of like, it's not really fair. It's like, like who's going to chirp me? You know what I mean? It's like I have an unfair advantage. It's like I have high social value because it's like, hey, you're on your own thing. So, yeah, so I haven't had any, any really anybody chirp me. But I'd be happy if they did. I'd probably prefer it because it would be like, it would help me, like, develop those skills of, like, being able to interact with the audience which is something I feel like I lack. I feel like, I feel like in one way that like I'm acting when I'm doing comedy as opposed to interacting with the audience. So it's like, because everything we've done so far has been like in front of a green screen, you know, with just me and David practicing day after day, hour after hour, like just putting, grinding it out, trying to get the words right. That like, <clears throat> I only had an opportunity to see three or four live audiences with my material that I developed since I've been away. So it's like, and all the material I developed when I was away, which made its way into the stuff I'm doing now was so like, you know, just, it was just so basic. Like it was like really, you know, it was the beginning. It was just like the first like five, six sets, 10 sets, 20 sets, the first little bit of like figuring that stuff out. And then as I, you know, started doing the zoom shows and then had this idea that I was like, I'm going to do my own special just like fuck it and then people told me you shouldn't do that because you're going to destroy your like anything you think you have you're just going to wreck because you're bringing out this material when it's not ready and i'm like well maybe but i put day like i I screwed up the recording on my first day of comedy so i don't have the first day i have day two on my youtube page and then i have day you know five and day seven and day nine like just randomly throughout the first you know my first month or so of comedy i just put them all out there because it's like you have to suck before you get better. And this is me sucking, right? And, and most people's first special, they fucking suck too. So I'd rather have my first shitty sucky special now when I'm 46 and then wait till I'm 50 and then have to wait, f- you know, who knows how long longer before I can make another one to see if it's any good. Like, so I'm just kind of like a fuck it, do it kind of guy. I'm just like, do it. So 
you know, I haven't seen any Canadian audiences yet. Hopefully they like me. I make a lot, I make fun of a lot of differences between me and, and Americans or us and Americans, but you yeah, know. you go back and forth. Yeah. 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 But all my, all my comedian friends, other than, um, Emil, Jeff, and like three or four others, Freddie, a couple other Canadians, like, um, Michael Moses, the guy, that guy, you know, just like a handful of Canadian people. Everybody else I know is American. They're all in LA and they're all, you know, working hard and getting, you know, TV deals and commercials and, um, you know, you know, are fighting for, you know, more time and more roles and stuff. So it's different. It's different to be down. There. I think that's one of the benefits that you'll find of having your own space is like for me, um, in terms of like interactions and crowd work, mm-hmm. um, you know, because there are fewer opportunities within actual like proper comedy shows at clubs. Um, I shy away from doing that for the most part and try and keep it to my material and work and get it done and stuff I know will mostly work. Um, mm. And then those indie shows where you're working stuff out, you would have the luxury of crowd interactions. Yep. 90% of the time, it's just comedians there. So you don't really have that yep. opportunity. So uh, I think you'll find that having your own space and being able to put yourself on any of the shows that you end up producing once this is back up and running yeah. will definitely be something good for you. Because if you do it and it goes shit, you don't have to worry about not being invited yeah. back to the next round of shows. Yeah. You're like, well, fuck yeah. it. Good news. I'm back on the show next yeah, week. Guess what? I can try again. Yeah. 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 So I think, I think that's something great for you that you should absolutely take advantage of. Yep. It's uh play you the know, cards you're dealt. You put the effort. In, what was that? I said, play the cards you're dealt. Well, and, and the fact that I think that's a nice little extra ace in your sleeve that you can use and, and yep. you've put yourself in a position to to have that advantage. And I think it's a good one and you should absolutely fully take advantage of it. I agree. I, I thought I battled with it for like half a minute thinking to myself, like, well, is it like, are you cheating? And then I'm like, fuck cheating. I've been broke my whole life. I don't give a fuck. Definitely. <laughs> definitely is not, bud. It definitely is not. Like, it's, uh, you yeah. know, um, you, you start, you know, you look are. at it this way. If it was somebody else's club and you knew the owner, yep. would you not be like, Hey man, can I come on? I'll, I'll do, I'll do bullet. I'll go first. I'll, yep. I'll eat shit on stage. I don't yep. care. Just mm-hmm. let me come up and do it and do it and do yep. it and do it. So yep. you wouldn't be shy about asking a friend that. So nope. I don't know why you would ever think twice about doing it for yourself. It's your fucking club. Because the human <laughs> brain is <laughs> the way it's programmed. It sometimes makes things look like they, you know, like, like it's like, I don't even know how to describe it, but like, you know, you have these weird feelings of... Uh, well, of you think that people will perceive you as cheating right. because it's your club. Exactly. You exactly. You, well, let me ask you this, man. Do you think that people that are doing the extended feature spots or headline spots on any given club show ever, any night of the week, um, are thinking, fuck, if I do another one of these, I'm taking t- an opportunity away from someone who wishes they could do it? They're definitely not. Yeah. So mm-hmm. help yourself, bro. Yeah. Fucking take those minutes and use them and, and yep. use them wisely. No, I, I agree with that 100. percent It's like you. It's start from where you are. This is these are the cards I was dealt. You know, I didn't ask for an empty place that was like I wish it was full, and I wish we weren't under pandemic, and I wish that this place was full and paying its rent because then I would have all the money to travel around and go to Ottawa and go to Toronto and go to L.A. and and do comedy. But like now we don't, so so we don't get the income, and you know, and now we're just you know we're kind of just stuck here. So we're like, well, you know, David, you're moving in. I can't use a computer, so uh, we're making fucking podcasts and making shows, and you know, trying to figure out how to make skits and try to figure out how to make fucking TikToks and how to make like we don't have anything else going on. Like this, like I had a massage today at two o'clock. Rough life I lead. Like that's all I got is is. You know, silly side TV and massages Massages, and, you know, whiskey and some good friends. I don't fucking need anything else, to be honest. Just to clarify, jerking yourself off in the shower is not a massage. I I lie down. I'm old. I don't shower too much now. It's too much effort in the shower. I get my phone slippery. First and 15th of every month. First and 15th. (laughs) The first and the 15th is a thing where welfare used to come out. 
in the states used to come out on the first and the fifteenth. Mm-hmm. So there was there was there was like racial epithets and whatnot about like on the first and the fifteenth. You know, you'd be like, you know, you get to have McDonald's on the first yeah. and the fifteenth. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, yeah, the McDonald's ain't the lineup ain't busy on the third and fourteenth. It ain't busy, but on the fifteenth, the McDonald's is busy. That's that what they're sense. saying. Yeah, that's when drug sales are always up. Drug sales from our yeah from our ex uh, local drug dealer. Um, yeah, sales were up on the first and the fifteenth, but in Canada it would have been on the first and the first. Because yeah. we don't have no fifteenth, we don't get no check every two weeks, right? This is that's so music. Uh, David's losing. He's losing his mind. He's losing us on camera. He's like, why don't you put that camera on me and this camera on you? It keeps cutting out. It's ridiculous. I got those new batteries. Those new. And David, can David still hear us? Yep. I just wanted to check with him to see if the neck tattoo was part of the benefits package at Silly Side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't have one yet, so no. <laughs> <laughs> we got a guy. We got a guy. It's a uh, David. Do you want to tell him what kind of tattoo it is? Uh, it's a permanent one. Nope. <laughs> it's a permanent tattoo. <laughs> There's no such thing as permanence, my young yeah. friend. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Yeah. Um, but uh, what what is it? What is the tattoo of? Oh, it's a tattoo of a butterfly. A butterfly. Nice. And what kind of butterfly is it? It's just a regular butterfly. No, it isn't. We talked about this the other day. It's a gangster butterfly, oh, yeah, motherfucker. It's a gangster motherfucking <laughs> butterfly. <laughs> you guys want to see the only tattoo I have? Oh, I don't know. I'm nervous around you. It was, uh, it was really... <laughs> It was really embarrassing, especially in jail. Oh dear, don't if you have to bend over, I'm gonna be uncomfortable. Oh dear. Oh I can't tell what is it uh is it a is it a oh, Jesus? If it's fish? a target on your rectum, the place is gonna fucking is, burn to the ground. Uh, <laughs> wow. So it was it was an ex's name and then uh I met my now wife and she got my name on her ass, so then I had to luckily the Did last that also happen was in jail? Name, oh. Was the tattoo? No. No, no, the, the wife. wife. Did you meet the wife in jail? No, no, no. <laughs> Baby, when you call me, you can call me wife. Call me wife. That's my name. It's a love story. It is a love story. David, I have fire. another uh, question about that butterfly tattoo, partner. Shoot. What's up? Did the artist like have to think twice about it? He, had he ever done one not on someone's lower back? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah he actually like he wasn't he didn't want to do it at first he told me he wasn't gonna do it because it's my first tattoo as well right so he's like I can't give you a tattoo on your neck for your first one he told me to go home and then I told him I wanted a butterfly and he's like "Eh, sure why not yeah (laughs) <laughs> like, it's so his first weird? instinct was this kid hasn't thought this all the way through yeah you came his... back and he was like now i know you haven't thought it all the way through i'm gonna do it yeah, yeah basically <laughs> perfect he's like i want a nine millimeter motherfucking butterfly <laughs> <laughs> nine with the clip i want the butterfly it's, with the clip i want the it's weird that he didn't give you the bonus tattoo of the teardrop yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, for our fallen homies I miss you. Uh, what's that clicking sound? I don't think that's us. Sometimes I hear like a click, like a click. Somebody might be playing. Is it that? Game. No. Did you hear it? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah, you... it's fucking me. I'm fidgeting with some shit because I'm fucking special. Are you nervous? <laughs> Are you special? What's going on over there, buddy? You got your shirt? I like it. Uh, clicking. I saw a show. A uh, comedy show, and the gentleman. Um, so basically, I went into a comedy club, and I went in through the back because I'm a comedian and I didn't want to pay. So I went through the back, and I go into this comedy club, and uh, and I, it's just it happenstance where I was standing because I was smoking a joint. I was outside. Um, a gentleman pulled up to the comedy thing, and he wanted, and he was coming in, and I just happened to be standing there, and I was a doorman for a lot of years, so like. It was just, it wasn't even on purpose. It was just the way I just, he pulled up. I knew to open the rope and let him in. And he was like fucking probably like 70 years old. And he walked by me in like a 70 year old suit. He was driving a Cadillac, like, you know, like a white, maybe like a DeVille, like a nice Cadillac, bigger car. Pulls in. He walks through. And and I wasn't performing at that show or anything like that. So I was just like a, just a person, but I was hanging out. 
And then he went in, and then so I followed him in, and he went to the back of the room. I went to the back of the room. I kind of sat to the right. He sat to the left. And then it turned out he was the host of that show. And he would get up, and he was like, I mean, he must have been 74, 75, something years old. He would get up on the thing, and he would like, he would say like, he'd go, okay, next up is going to be, you know, Roger Waters is coming up. And he would snap his fingers. He'd be like, you know, so I was with my wife tonight at Walmart, and she said... Like something, and and everybody would laugh. Like whatever he said, followed by whatever he said, like a joke. Like he said, like a punchline, and then he said, like, right? He said like a thing, and then a punchline, right? And then he'd snap his fingers, and people would laugh. And then by the probably by the seventh or eighth time he went up to introduce the next comic, he went up there and he just went like that, and people laughed. And I was like, what the fuck is this guy on? Right? Like this was amazing. <laughs> so I need to look up who he was. I know the date I was there, but I don't remember that guy's name but what a cool cat that guy was that story has nothing to do with tonight's show i just thought i would share it <laughs> do you have random weird like things that have happened while you've been traveling around doing comedy emil i'm looking at you when you uh, like, and you're just i don't like, know about random but just these things um, that happen i don't know i was just i got sidetracked looking at the truckers trucking with trucks comment that says <laughs> yo what's up cory feldman <laughs> cory <laughs> feldman is actually a Pretty good chisel. So, um, I think he spelled your name wrong too. Almost certainly. Um, is pretty dude. Corey's the one. Corey Feldman is the one that's still alive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Little... And Corey, what's the other Corey from Goonies? Haim. Corey Haim, the handsome one. He didn't make it. Yeah. No, he had some problems. That he had kid. Some problems. Yeah. Um, probably a lot to do with the producers fucking him. Probably a little <laughs> yeah. bit. <laughs> Brent, uh, when you were in L.A., man, did you get to go up at any of the, like, the um, uh, Mondays at uh, the comedy store? <laughs> no. You didn't? <laughs> no, I didn't. I went. Did you, the, did you try? Oh, fuck yeah, I did. Um, I went to the comedy store one time when I was in L.A., and I went there only because every night I was there, I was doing comedy. And if I wasn't doing comedy, like, no, I did comedy every night I was there. So the idea was that, like, I wasn't going to go to the comedy store at all because I didn't want to go there unless I knew I could perform. And then after I'd been there for a month and I knew I was going home the next day, I went to the Monday, which is the open mic Monday. At, it's yeah. the, uh, I went there for that. And, um, and I was the very first person to sign up for that night. And, uh, and one of the guys that I met when I was down there that hosted uh, a lot of the mics at the fourth wall, one of the ones I went to, um, which was like a working mic for comics to go to. Um, I met this one guy there. I can't remember his name right now. It doesn't matter. But I can't remember his name right now. But he's awesome. He was there too. And he saw me. And he was just like a nice comedic brother. And was just like, like he knew I didn't know anybody there. And when I say like I was the first person to sign up, I was the first of 400. Yeah. To sign well, up. I know it gets like two, 300 on a regular basis. Dude, this. I was and the first of hundreds. Right? That's funny. Hundreds. And then you basically have to hang out for a couple hours till everybody's done signing up and, and then Wait they and see. pull it in. Right. And yeah. you get three minutes, right? It's not even a full yeah. five or seven. Yeah. 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 Three. And for me, who's more of like a storyteller, three's tough, dude. Oof. I don't know what the fuck I would do with three minutes. Oh, yeah. <sighs> so I signed up for that and I signed up for the Kill Tony show, which is which is filmed on the same night at the yep. same at the comedy store. Or was it's no longer filmed there now it's filmed in Austin Texas where Dave and I were just talking about going, um, but yeah now it's filmed <laughs> in Texas but uh, I signed up for that as well and I had a moment with Tony I had a moment with Tony Hinchcliffe a moment and um, um, you know when you know you like had a, a moment you guys locked eyes or? yes like a moment where we know we were in each other's presence without question. And if that other person denied, like if Tony denied that that, like it was an enough of a moment that if he denied it happened and we were in prison, we would have to fight. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so like it was a real moment. So like we were both in the bathroom together, right? We were standing beside each other. He was wearing a pink sweater. It was kind of gay, right? And, and I was like, and I was beside him, right? And I looked at him. And I was like, don't be that guy. Like, I mean, and one, like, it's not Tom Cruise. It's fucking Tony Hinchcliffe. Who the fuck cares, right? Like, like seriously, like, I could, like, I don't even know. Like, it's nothing. It's Tony, right? 
And, and for the most part, I don't even like him. I only, I only know about him because of that show and because he's been on Rogan a number of times because he's one of Rogan bitches, right? He's like a Rogan under. He's like a Rogan bottom. He's a Rogan bottom, right? So, like, so I'm just like, that's Tony, right? It's cool. So I'm in the bathroom. I'm pissing. I'm, he's there. And I'm like, my dick's bigger than yours, whatever. And then I'm like, <laughs> it's no big deal. And then I'm like, he's got pink on, right? I'm like, I would have pink on too if I had a small penis. And then I'm like, and then and we had that moment where we locked eyes. And I was like, you know, that, that just like, cool, right? We acknowledge that. I have a bigger penis than you. We acknowledge that, right? And that's it, right? And then he left. And I thought to myself, fuck, I guess I should have got a picture. With his penis? No, yeah, just of like us men, together. Men's room's not the place to ask for that. I don't. It's, uh, it's, it's not. Mm. I mean, if it was like, if it was Clint Eastwood, I would have been like, sir, we need a picture. I'm sorry. Your penis is huge. But we need a picture of us together to prove to my friends but like, like no, my friends bad, don't. bathrooms definitely never the place for any interaction <laughs> ever i uh i did a show at yucks yeah. uh, it was a really full night great crowd everybody was super hot it was it was like yeah. it was just it was one of those great easy shows where everything's good <laughs> um did my spot got down off stage went to hit the men's room and like as i'm walking in a guy's like finishing up and about to walk out and he says, you know, good show. And he pats me on the arm, dude. And it's like, <laughs> like well, why would you do that? Like, yeah. that is absolutely, the, yeah. even if you just yeah. finished washing yeah. your hands, dude, don't, don't yeah. put your hands freshly from your junk onto another no. person that is a stranger in a men's room. It was just, uh, it was not, uh, it was not <laughs> kosher, as they say in the business. Uh, didn't love it. And I would highly recommend against it. Yeah. Don't uh, ask for the picture, just take it. Nobody <laughs> oh. Well, at, at Silly Side TV, where we're, where we're building out our like comedy club thing that we're thinking about, it is, in, it is crucial to me, Emil, that like when comics come here, I want you, to, like I, I was in every single room in the comedy store. I'm not saying that to impress, but to impress upon that I want to create that environment here where even if you're just an open mic comic or you're at a, if you're featuring, you're at a feature level, if you're at a headline level, if you're Norm fucking McDonald, it doesn't matter. You come here, you have an experience where you get to feel like I'm in the green room with the people. Like I'm in this green room. I look at the monitor, there's the stage, there's audience waiting for you. Even if it's 30 audience members and there's 30 fucking comedians, it doesn't matter. We're coming out here and we're putting on the real idea of a show and we get to feel like it feels like where if you're somewhere where it matters. And that's kind of what I envision as like an experience. So that that's just, cool, man. Yeah, I think I think comics will will flock to that. That's really cool. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, uh, the sort of the that's one of the things during COVID that's sort of been missing is, um, you know, when you get to clubs, indie shows, they're usually at bars or other type yeah. places where you don't have the luxury of a green room. So you've maybe got like a comics table at the back, but yeah. you know, you, you guys can't be shooting the shit while people are on stage 60 feet away or whatever it yeah. is uh, at the other end of the room. So to have the luxury of, you know, a dedicated space like a green room where people can kind of catch up for a minute. Oh, Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. Or, Hey, I'd never met you. Nice to meet you. Looking forward to seeing some of your stuff, whatever it is. Um, you know, that's, that is part of the experience. And I think that's part of how people grow and it's part of how, um, the there's that transference of experience uh, from people who've been doing this for a long time yeah. to people that haven't where you sort of get that shared knowledge it's not like you know back in the day in Major League Baseball when uh, when a guy got called up to the show for the first time a veteran would take him and buy him a tailored suit right. that was like the tradition yes. in Major League Baseball and I think you know those type of things should exist in environments like that where it's like hey I'm here. I have this knowledge that someone gave to me mm -hmm. and now the new guard is here and, and joining this community. Let me pass some of that knowledge on to you. Sounds like Narcotics Anonymous. Narcotics Anonymous. Sounds like <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I think there is probably a little bit of, uh, uh, it's a bit cultish. There's probably some crossover between, you know, drug addiction and, jumping on a stage and talking to fucking strangers like Comedy you're addiction. you're yeah. you're chasing a different dragon but you're yes. still chasing it yes yes we are <laughs> yeah i can't wait to get back on a stage again yeah i've been jonesing for it for sure 
<laughs> you know, when, when it feels good, it's tough to, it's tough to replicate that. Right. Like, mm-hmm. you know, when you have a good show and there was a lot of people there and the energy was good and whatever, you know, you, you like that post show hang where it's like, cool, let's, you know, let's do something. Let's chill. Let's, let's rehash the, the, the craziness of the night. And what's you know, been you your have worst that. experience on stage? For you Ooh, and me. Worst like, in, experience? Like, in your, like in your soul, you're like, Ugh, that was hard. It's funny. Like, I, I don't know because I don't have aspirations of, you know, stadium tours and shit like yeah, that with this. Yeah, I yeah, don't, yeah. Uh, I don't know that any night really kills me, but there's definitely been nights. I had a night recently uh, at Yucks in Ottawa yeah. and it was a Sunday, it was a Sunday night show as I mean, it was, it was COVID COVID full. So, you yeah. know, you're 50 COVID people friendly. and yeah. all that shit. And, uh, you know, a guy I know really well and have known for a very long time, like long before comedy ever happened, um, was the MC that night, one okay. of the real strong, you know, strong comedians in, in comedy. And so he brought me up and I was well prepared and just for whatever reason, right from the outset, I just didn't fucking have it. Like there yeah. was never, I couldn't find that comfort. I couldn't find the rhythm. And it just, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't a nightmare. Like there were some chuckles, but the shit that I think that is my funniest stuff wasn't landing in the way that I would think it would land or, right. or does yeah, land yeah, a lot yeah, of times. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, all those things that you sort of, I'm going to, you know, it's an older joke. I'm going to keep it in my back pocket. Yeah. If things aren't going well, I'll roll it out. It'll yeah. go great. And, it's and flat. like, it just, yeah, it just, it was, the whole thing was flat and yeah. like, you know, and because it was someone I knew who was hosting that night, it was almost like there's that embarrassment. You're, that You're like, fuck, I just, I yeah. shit the bed in front of my buddy. And, uh, yeah. and you know, he's been around long enough that he doesn't truly doesn't give a fuck. He yeah, probably wasn't course. even listening while yeah. I was on stage. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Be honest. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> for me, that was one of the ones like, you know, you come home and you're disappointed. You're like, well, fuck. And I think there's also, you know, when you're in a club, you have that added pressure, but it's, it's your own personal pressure. You, you, when you're in those environments and they're professional spaces and, and, you know, at the top of the list, whoever's headlining the night or featuring that night is probably someone who does it for a living and has been for a while. Yeah. Um, you, you, you want to show up, you know what I mean? You want to, yeah. you want to deliver laughs. So at the end of the night, they're like, Hey, you're not the fucking worst. You're right. Yeah. Um, so those, those are the nights that sting when they don't go real well. Um, it's funny. Sometimes a night, can shift from show to show. I, I had a show, um, two shows in early December where it was, it, the first was that meow show. Okay. And then there was another show at a different venue at over at poor boy, both indie shows. Um, and both were essentially crowds of comics. And I was like, okay, I'm committed to doing 99% new material when I go to meow. Yeah. And I went and like, it just didn't feel like, like, and, and when you're doing the jokes in front of other comics, it's usually like they're working on their notes. They're not yep. really necessarily paying attention, <laughs> but it was, it was, it was, Dude, I didn't get I the light till I was fucking 12 minutes at that fucking show. I was like, I was right. like, so I was like, dude, how much time do I get? And he was like, he was like, ah, as five, much as six you want. minutes. I was like, Spencer was like five, six minutes. I'm like, all right, five or six, which one is it? I'm like, I've just got here from LA. Is it five or six minutes? I got fucking no. And he's like six minutes. I'm like, all right, cool. And then, like, finally he calls me up, and I'm like, all right. And then he did some, like, horrible, like, debauchery about sex with animals. And, like, he, like, did some horrible shit to bring me up. And he was like, ah, oh, I can't believe I did that, did this to this guy. Like, this is the first time here. Sorry. I'm like, great. Awesome. Thanks for the intro. And then it was like, and then it was on. And then I went, and it was like six minutes, seven minutes, nine minutes, 12 minutes. I was like, when are you going to fucking light me, man? Like, like I'll go forever, but like, hello. And then finally I was like, I just, I just came to a close. It was probably around 11 and a half minutes. I was like, all right, like he's forgotten. Right. And so, um, I, I kept it to seven minutes and, and it was seven, mostly new minutes. And it just, it was real quiet. I got a couple little chuckles at stuff and it wasn't, it wasn't anything like I didn't feel badly. I felt like I was well prepared and executed and did what I wanted to do, but it's just one of those nights. It's an empty room. It's just comics. Yeah. You know, it's essentially workshop type stuff. Um, and me and another comic on the show, David Haddad, we're going to that second show together. Um, and when we went, like when we hopped in the car to go to the second show, I was like, it's like, I don't think I'm going to do that material again now. Um, right. Cause that show is usually a little busier and we got there and, and it was just comics again. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do it again. 
And the second time I did it, it was way better received. The different group of comics good, was, good, good. Yeah. you know, it, the feedback was there. And, you know, a couple of the veteran comics from the scene were like, hey, I really like the new stuff you're working on and whatever. And so, you know, it immediately sort of re-upped the energy behind continuing to stay with those jokes versus abandoning them. Um, but that that feeling's there, right? When you go and you, <laughs> you workshop some shit and it's not... It's such it's amazing not, how such a little you know, bit of feedback can give us hope to go on for the, the teeniest, like, the teeniest little bit. Yeah, a little bit of feedback. You're like, you're like, just a tiny bit of positive feedback. You're like, I knew I was onto something, and then you run with it for like three more years, and then like you find yeah. out it's shit. Well, and I don't know how it is for the rest of you guys, but like when I, when an idea hits me or a premise or or, or sort of the punchline hits mm. me that I'm going to build around, um, you know it amuses me while I'm writing it. Like, I'm like, this is fucking funny. I love yeah. it. This makes me yeah, laugh. That's yeah, why I yeah, think yeah. it I will know. make someone else laugh. Up, and then when wife, other I'm people like, don't laugh at it, it's like, this is Ooh. funny. Yeah, I know. Like, was I wrong? Was it not funny? What was I laughing at? <laughs> I do it to David like 19,000 times. I'm like, he's like, it's still not funny. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you don't understand. You're too young. You don't get it. You don't understand what it's like. You just don't know. Yeah. Most of the uh, time, that's probably fair. It's fair, yeah. Uh, I'm working on two new bits this week. I'm working on a bit about um, what it's like. I'm, I'm working on a bit about being like overtly above everybody else, being better than everybody else because I have a Tesla. So I've been working on like material about like how much better I am than everybody else because only because I have a Tesla. So I've been like working on that. And then, um, so I've been working on Tesla and I've been working about bicycles. I've been working on a bit about like people riding their bicycles on the, on the sidewalk in front of my comedy club. So I'm like, how I time it perfectly that I always exhale my marijuana smoke from my breath just as the old, like 79 year old lady is riding her bicycle down by the sidewalk. And then I talk about how many deaths there are per year of motorists hitting bicycles, which is quite high, staggering actually. It's almost as much as COVID numbers, how many cyclists die every year because of motorists hitting cyclists. And then I talk about how are many- Are you sure they're not dying of embarrassment by, because they're adults riding fucking bicycles? Because of their tight shorts, yes. And then, and then I talk about how many cyclists die on the sidewalk and how many pedestrians die on the sidewalk because of of, of, of incidents of crashing bicycles into pedestrians. And I've researched this like, ex, like a lot. I've like put a lot of energy. I've like at least two or three minutes I've looked into how often this happens. And it's a fucking big fat zero. David, you lost my camera. You're talking to some girl online and you lost my camera again in your champion sweatshirt that Emil and I would have paid $8 for oh at the tiger store when we were kids and now it's popular. The or at Walmart even, you can get champion. them still even, the champion brand. The champion brand. <laughs> What's going on with that camera, buddy? It's never done this before. Well, now it's doing it now, so what are we gonna do about it? I bought you those fancy things that plug into the <laughs> stuff. I got a pretty good cyclist story. I wanna hear a good cyclist story. So I used to live with this crackhead guy, uh, him and his girlfriend, I and uh, like he would ride. story. <laughs> story in itself. So he would ride his bike down this busy, uh, down Young Street, down this hill, and uh, his goal was to be riding down this hill and for somebody to pull out and hit him, and he was going to get a lawsuit and whatever, take the pain. And uh, so one day it actually worked, and I got a, a bunch of phone calls saying, so his nickname was The Cripple, because he fell off, like, fell down a mountain snowboarding, and he was already fucked up. So I got a phone call, and they're like, The Cripple's laid out on Young Street, he got hit by a car, and uh, he actually pulled it off, he ended up getting like a $50,000 settlement. Nice. And uh, most of that money, he just spent buying drugs off me at the time. Ah, but, uh, should have put it in so Bitcoin. So technically, you got a $50,000 settlement. settlement. <laughs> yeah, I got like 30, 25. 30, maybe. 25, 30. Should have put it in Bitcoin. Both of you. Both you yeah, fucking lame-ass motherfuckers should have put it in Bitcoin. <laughs> it was a pretty wild two years. I'll, yeah. I'll never live with a crackhead again, that's for sure. It's fun while it lasted. Who is, uh, who is truckers trucking with trucks? Uh, it's this guy, uh, Jesus, or Jesus, out of uh, Tucson, Arizona. He just said Brent should work on a bit about being funny. 
<laughs> a bit about in our chat live. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. I've been working on, I've been working on bits about being funny, uh, like exclusively, like a lot. And I agree with you. Truckers doing truckers, truckers fucking truckers doing fuckers. What is what is this? Truck, truckers truckers truck fucking truck. truckers. What is this? Truckers trucking. truckers fucking truckers. What is this? I'm sorry, I don't understand. David, tell me. truckers. It's the guy from truckers fucking truckers at truck stops. Is that what this is? No, it's. it's I'm fun. working on being funny. I'm sorry. Truckers fucking. <laughs> David finds it funny when I say truckers fucking truckers. But anyways, you're saying. Is truckers, truckers blowing truckers. Truckers, truckers truck sucking truckers' cocks. It's funny. <laughs> truckers you fucking just... truckers. You're like, if you fuck each other, you'd save a lot of money on lot lizards. Because you'd be like, <laughs> you'd spend less money on lot lizards. Those are prostitutes in trucking lots. If you oh. fucked less truck lizards, you would Trust. know who the fuck that guy is Zuckerberg. Because Zuckerberg is a lizard <laughs> who sucks fucking truckers. <laughs> I'm out of control. <laughs> and Emil is checking his fucking emails. He He's checking his... Said, uh, this is my I'm, I'm following the chat here. My guy truck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm looking a little bit too. He just said, this is my favorite white supremacy podcast. White sup I am... My best friend is from Guyana. So I don't know what you're talking about. Who is, I don't know. Who is it? Yeah, I, I have a black about. friend. Is not to defense there, Brent. I don't know if you know that. Is yeah. that no longer a defense? That's that's no, that's a de facto defense. Is that I have a friend? He's not my friend. He's literally my brother. He's like my stepbrother, and he's and he's as black as black can be. So I don't know. You've met him, David. He's he's, he's black. black. He's yeah. fucking black. And I am oh, almost. David's as black verifying as him. that he's real. Even you're going all in on this. Yeah, like I can dance. Like you don't even know. I can fucking dance. Like you're like, look at this fat, ugly looking trucker looking motherfucking white guy. I'm like, no, you don't know. I can like. I can dance better than anybody on this podcast without question. Even David, who's a superstar, could be Michael Jackson. I'm just saying. I can't dance. This is just like the COVID version of uh, hecklers. That's all this is. COVID hecklers. <laughs> Live chats. <laughs> truckers doing truckers doing truckers. You should open your own podcast called Truckers Doing Truckers. That's nice. No, that's what that's what the podcast is called. <laughs> that's what the podcast is called. Yeah. Wow, man! Is there anything that criminals can do other than trucking? <laughs> Just curious. No, I don't know. I wouldn't mind driving a truck. I'd be making a lot more money than I am now. Yeah, but no, you're you're doing you're doing fine. You're going to be a comedy superstar. You just need to relax. You'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. <laughs> So what's going on with the game? Are we all out of the questions there? I uh, totally have, forgot about the we game. Question number four. I think it was, so Brent, it was Brent's turn. Oh dear. He screwed up the question about oceans. The oceans. Okay, yeah. Um, so that would mean, yeah, remember, try and remember that for next time, Brent. Um, <laughs> that would make it Emil's turn. Emil. Yeah, I'm listening. I'm going to get you to list three things that are in the sky Go. Uh, clouds, fake Jesus, and the sun. <laughs> fake Jesus. I guess I, we can count that. Eight pounds, six ounce, fake baby Jesus. Jesus. Eight pounds, six ounce, fake baby Jesus. The fake baby Jesus. Um, <sighs> you missed Trucker that. guy's super religious. I clackered. You missed it. I did miss it. You missed the clackered. It's okay. For those who didn't get it, I missed the clacker. <laughs> That's and how you know it's legit. It's legit, man. You don't even know. I heard that on Amazon cost me nineteen dollars. Nineteen dollars. Yep. You can get pretty much anything on Amazon. Yep. I got three wives for nineteen dollars. Adam. That was Amazon and not AliExpress. Oh, it was <laughs> it was Alibaba. Yeah, it was AliExpress. Sorry, I got confused. <laughs> Adam, list three cleaning supplies. Go. Three cleaning supplies. Go. A mop, a scrubbing brush, and a dusting pan, oh, I guess. Oh, no toothbrush. No toothbrush. Definitely uh, thought you were going to list three that you can cut meth with. <laughs> you got, <laughs> I didn't think of that. There's meth bleach. Was never my thing. Bennett, name three computer accessories. Go. 
mouse, a keyboard, and a webcam. Yeah, that'll count. Brent still has no points. That's awesome. Oh, and Brent is gone. <laughs> Look at that. It's perfect timing. We do need some <laughs> controversial questions. Yeah. Really controversial? Yeah. Well, Brent did okay. kill that bottle of Red Label, so I don't blame so him. So this question here. might be frowned upon, but uh, what time are we wrapping this shit up? <laughs> what time are we wrapping this up? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I was going to ask the same thing. We've been about two yeah, hours so what, far. What do we say? You want to say like 10 o'clock is our kill point for this? Yeah, we'll say 10 o'clock. And that and by that point, yeah, Brent, yeah. Brent might be ready for, for a snooze in his chair or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've been filming yeah, for exactly. two hours, <laughs> and we've been live streaming for almost two hours. Uh, can we steal a whole? We can steal a whole citizenship. I'm... Bennett, did you understand that comment? We can steal a whole citizenship. No, I didn't either. I sort of grazed over it. <laughs> Sorry, truckers trucking with trucks, but I don't understand it. Uh, hmm. Yeah, let's see if I can find better questions because these are kind of boring. Pick topics. Uh, Bennett, how many more drinks until you're checking out the neck on that uh, giraffe back there? <laughs> checking out the neck on the giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I, I've awesome. slowed down a bit. I'm between my water and my uh, my Foundry Brewing beer, nice, our sponsor. Nice. Mm, sponsor. <laughs> the hard water, eh? Butter. Yeah, no, this is one of their uh, their lagers, like one of their actual beers, but uh, same brewery. There you go. How long have you had that little draft there? Uh, about a year. It's my raccoon is oh, my yeah. go-to. Your go-to, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I think we've all what fucked this stuff in our camera, time. David. David, you're killing me, buddy. How, why is going on? We bought you those extra batteries that turn into plugins. They plug into the wall, right? Up until right now. Up until right now, they worked. Right we have the biggest show of my life coming up this Thursday on the Dad <laughs> Fan and Friends show, right? The original winner of Last Comic Standing, and you don't have my fucking camera working properly. What the fuck? This is bullshit. I got seven fucking minutes. I do seven minutes on Zoom, which is like 9,000 minutes in real life. Yeah, that's the time. And now here I am. Emil, I have seven oh, yeah. minutes to do on Thursday. That's tomorrow. Seven minutes on Zoom. I believe in you. I believe in you. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Believe in you. He says, I believe in you. Uh, I'm glad somebody does. It's just you, Adam, my wife. That's all that believe in me. David used hey, to man. believe in me, but he's given up hope. Yeah. He's like, That's three more than when, where people. most people start, guys. Three more than start <laughs> yeah. from where you are. You got three people that believe in you. Uh, you know, you are you are the comedy scene, Brent, locally, right? There is no comedy scene without you. In right? Cambridge, there is nobody. There is literally me and zero other people. That's it. <laughs> I thought before COVID, they had like the Gator's Tail was doing some kind of yuck did, yuck yeah, thing. But yeah, I, we went to one of them once. I almost got on stage that night because it was so bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Pick and Shovel used to do an open mic before they shut down to in yeah. Cambridge, I think. Yeah. We're going to get going. My, We're going to have a regular night. Yeah. yeah. yeah we need one of my buddies hosted that. Yeah. Mm. When does this lockdown end? When does this lockdown end? They said this, the kids go back to school. End of February. Mm. End of February? Yeah. That could change too. Yeah. There's no way that. Yeah, it's, yeah. I think they'll be online for the end of the semester. Yeah. Damn. It wouldn't make sense. Emil, do you Yeah, have I think it's just such like. No. No. <laughs> no. no. The, the sound of kids is actually like. The sound of kids or kids crying is actually like a full on trigger for me. Like I hear it and it's like, somebody find these, like somebody shake this baby, make it stop, <laughs> find yeah. the kid a dumpster. I'm not having it. Um, yeah, 100%. I actually have a joke about it. Like, you know, of your possible outcomes of sex, AIDS or having a kid, AIDS is the preferable option because at least you can learn to live with AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> You've met my son. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I feel about that way about kids in general. <laughs> no, my son's awesome. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, but every yeah, everybody that has a kid's a maniac like that. They think like you're gonna be the your kid is gonna be the one that swings that. Like we'll have the conversation. And people will be like, I can't believe you hate kids, and they'll be like, Look at my phone and yeah. look at my kid, and you're like, and you'll look at it, and then you'll look at them, and then you'll look back at it, and you'll be like, Gross. 
The only, <laughs> the only kid, the only phone, I, the only phone, the only, the only picture I have of my kid is when he was four, because that's when he stopped disappointing me. So I always keep that picture on my phone. Is when he was four. Hey, four years. You guys had a good run. We had a good run, buddy. He didn't disappoint me till four years, and he was like, "I wish I had a new daddy." And I was like, "At least I got a picture before he thought that." Dude, kids, <laughs> kids are lucky that you know. Uh, fire stations don't thing. accept teenagers to be dropped off in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. Oh, you just got canceled, son. That was awesome. It was worth it. It was totally worth it. Totally, I like that. <laughs> Love it. Oh, Can't really boy. get fired from a job you don't have. That's yeah. fact. Fact. We can always come to Silly Side TV. Just you and me, buddy. There you That's go, it. buddy. There you go. Uh, you, me, and Jeff, because he'll drive this far. He'll come. Jeff, Jeff will fucking come. Yeah. And he will wear his winter jacket on stage all the time, and it's fucking weird. It hides <laughs> the sweat. I get it. I know what he's doing. <laughs> I'm nervous, too, buddy. I'm nervous watching you. Fuck. I'm wearing a jacket, too. Yeah. No, that'll be good. He can sleep at, like, he can sleep in my office. It'll be fine. I feel like he would do it. He used to be in a punk rock band in the yep. day. Like, I feel he's, it. He's he will he will suffer for his art. He doesn't he give a fuck. Yep. That's awesome. No, I like that about him. I really do. I really there's a, there's a couple guys I've been watching. Like, just I don't know, there's certain I don't know what it is, but like, is it the algorithm? Is it like why are these things getting put in front of me? But there's a few artists that I've been watching. And you're one of them, and there's others that just keep popping up over and over. And I don't know if it's because they're the ones that like what I put out. I don't know. But, like, there's a few cats I've been watching. I'm like, I don't care what happens. We have to hang out and, like, do some shows and have some fun. Yeah, man. I'm down. Love it. I was watching uh, Polly Shore talk about um, booking different acts. And he was talking about how it doesn't matter to him whether he finds it funny it's whether or not he can see if they're doing it well. Do you know what that means? Emil, yeah, you know for me, music? it's about like seeing their presence on a stage, seeing their comfort level, seeing, you know, I think with certain comedians, especially people that quote unquote have it, um, sometimes there's a, there's a naturalness to what they're doing and, and, and you can even see the gerbil running in the wheel sometimes as, right. as yeah, yeah, yeah. something goes from an already fully cooked joke to this is evolving on stage in real time based on a riff or what I'm seeing or the audience's feedback. Um, so I think I think you can see that because I think sometimes people get up and, and I've seen a few newer people get up and, and they'll sort of they'll have their full sheet of paper written out and they're almost like reading and you're like, this is hard to do, but like, you don't get it. You know what I mean? Versus someone who'll get up and maybe their material isn't as good the first time out. And you can see that there's at least a comfort They're They're, they're coming back and forth across the stage. They're interacting. There's a little more presence and, and, you know, a little more naturalness because I can't find a fucking better word for it. Than do you think that you found, if you could say like your voice yet, do you think you've like you've been doing it a year and a half, two years? I don't, to be honest. Me neither. I don't. I honest. don't think I've had enough time on yeah. stage to really fully to find that. Like, yeah, I that feel guy. like yeah. I and I. It's for me. It's that I'm still in that transition from being the the funny friend who says shit off the cuff versus you know written material that I've practiced and honed and. Yeah whatever. And I'm trying to find the connection between those two things. Um, you know, like if I'm hanging out with friends or family and something strikes me as funny and I start going with it and it's almost, you know, it becomes almost the rantings of a madman <laughs> and, and I, that, and that side of it qu hasn't quite come out on stage yet. Mm. And, and I'm looking forward to when it finally <laughs> clicks over. Like I know it's there. I, yeah. I, I see it when I'm having those interactions, um, on a private level. So, uh, I hope that finds its way to, to the stage at some point because truthfully, um, that's that's the natural habitat for me, and I, I that is my voice. Um, so we're not, we're not there yet, but hopefully, you know, if we keep clicking away at it, and yeah, um, we'll get there. And and the flip side of that too is, uh, you know, you, you hope that when that voice finally makes an appearance and 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 settles in and becomes that on stage. 
persona, you hope people will like it and enjoy it and will laugh and find the stupid shit that you find funny, funny also, or, you know, that they're able to relate to on some level. They probably will. I think like when you manage to reach that place of being like that organically yourself on stage, I mean, again, I'm not a comedian, but I feel like people will just find those things funny yeah. purely because you do. You yeah. know what I mean? You got to trust it so much. Mm -hmm. You have to trust that there's other yeah. people that think like you do, but like yeah. immediately you think because I'm an insecure person, they mm -hmm. think like nobody's going to think the way I do and nobody but thinks like the we way all I do. do. Yeah. But then <laughs> you like, you only need to find like there's 8 million, 8, sorry, billion, million, 8 yeah. billion people on the planet. So like you only need to find a tiny fraction of that to think that you're cool or funny and then you you win like it's yeah, over. it's actually kind of like, crazy how people think oh nobody yeah. thinks like what i'm thinking when there's yeah. literally like eight billion other people out in the world thinking the same thing. yep yep and that's the thing it's like so how yeah. do you plug into those you know and that's where we find out who we are we plug mm -hmm. into those things and we find out and i like that well and i think comedy's got a bit of a funny paradox too right um there's there's an inherent uh, and ridiculous Adam, level of confidence moving. that needs Adam, to go stop into um, <laughs> stop you know, that needs moving. to go into even having the jam stop. to get up on stage to start with. Mm. Um, but it's a, it's a faux confidence because so many of us have that uh, you know quiet self esteem issue in the background mm. that says you know please approve of me with your laughter I need it. Um, so there's that weird like yes i'm confident enough to get up on stage and do it but you know also if you don't give me your approval i'm quietly going to have hurt feelings and, and not want to do it more and with that in mind i think we're at our 10 o'clock cutoff that we were talking about uh so where can we find you guys adam emil or about uh like what, what are you guys who up to where can mom we find to you guys? Don't say who invited address. mom Holy fucking shit balls, Batman. <laughs> hey, I Sorry, just figured, Mom. Uh, you can I, find I, I me on Suicide TV, you motherfucking bitch. Get, what the fuck are you talking get, about? Get we gotta shut down the show. We gotta tell us about two and a half What are you gonna do tonight? <laughs> you were like, my girlfriend's waiting for me, so I need to get the fuck off here. I gotta, like, she even made me cocktails. No, we gotta save some conversation for next Wednesday. I have a. Yeah, Bennett's producing, man. Let him produce. I know. Emil, you rock. I think we have to answer this last question from right. Truckers Trucking with Trucks before we go. <laughs> God. He, says, he says, would you rather kiss a girl with cock breath or a straight man with clean breath? Oh, I take the cock good. breath girl all day long. During well, hold on, hold I on. I've on kissed a girl after a blowjob. The, the, the cock breath in question is a cock breath because of your cock or yeah, someone that's else's? What I, was Whoa. About to say. I, I think that's a, that's a that's a huge yeah. factor. Yeah, it is a big. I'll factor. kiss a girl after a blowjob. That's all right. Yeah, but if somebody else got the blowjob, are you still kissing that girl? <laughs> yeah, that's a tough what was, choice. What there. was the alternative? The alternative. You kind of lost me a cock have, breath. You have to kiss <laughs> either a girl with cock breath or a dude with really good breath. Oh, dude with really good breath. <laughs> Hundred <laughs> percent. Oh uh, boy, I once I, I once bet somebody in a bar that I could make out with somebody before they could, and then I literally walked up to the group that he was speaking to and made out with a guy in his group <laughs> only because I knew for sure that guy would be like good with it, and I was like, "Fuck you, give my hundred dollars," and I don't give a fuck. Yeah, million dollars. I didn't blow anybody. I kissed a guy for fucking hundred bucks. Yeah, dude. it took me two seconds. <laughs> Oh, fuck yeah i i th i think that's automatic you fuck that regardless guy. of regardless of uh sex or inclination you, yeah. you opt to put your mouth in the place that's the cleanest yeah, yeah I, can see that. I mean if you got your eyes closed right it's, you can just pretend it's a girl if it's dark <laughs> a hole's a hole yeah i guess that's fair. The, the purpose of tonight's episode what? is if it's dark a hole is a hole only if it's dark not if it's only if it's out. dark if there's a <laughs> glimmer of light either you better watch what the fuck you're doing. Is the, is the, is the Tom Segura note for me because I'm fat and I have a beard? Oh, Tom <laughs> Segura. I like Tom. Yeah, he's great. I yeah, love him. I like Tom Papa, too, that guy with the makes the bread. Yep. Yeah, I like He's been guy. at that for a really long time, long dude. Time. He's been a pro for a fucking million yeah. years. His wife died on him. Hey, she gave up. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's tough. When did that uh, happen? Like two, three years ago. Like, oh, big, wow. like in his career, like... That was a big hurdle for, I mean, like, can you imagine? Like, I mean, I can, and, and I can imagine because I really love somebody. If you really love somebody and then they go and die on you, like, fuck that person. Let's make <laughs> bread. Let's make bread. Be Tom, Papa. So. Bread therapy. 
Yeah, bread therapy. God bless that guy. Who, you know, the I bet guy... it. Go back to producing. What's happening here? Are we closing this up? I... Oh yeah, yeah. That's. I know. Yeah, where where can we find you guys? Like, what are your guys' handles? That's uh, where can our viewers find you guys? Uh, uh, you if they've my... made it through. Yeah, yeah. Take take your. Emil, you go first. I was just gonna say, if they've made it through two hours of this, good the fuck <laughs> on them. Uh, but I have a little uh, Instagram account at Comedy Emil. Um, you know, come if they if they're around and they want to follow, great. Uh, I generally just put up places I'm gonna be, and right now I ain't gonna be fucking anywhere. So, um, yeah, that's that's the big plug. Maybe next time. Yeah, truckers trucking with trucks. If you're still listening, go follow Emil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Emil, if we him. ever get going again, please come hang out with us. 100%. 100%, Maddie. Yeah. Like, yeah. we don't have no, to agree on everything to get along. I actually just put my uh, my uh, handle in the chat there for truckers trucking with trucks. Nice. <laughs> nice. nice. What hey, one let's follow shout him out. Let's shout him out because he's been a fucking trooper yeah, hanging out for the last two hours. Yeah. 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 Check out his podcast if there's ever time. Yeah. Oh, it's an actual podcast. I thought really? You were joking. Truckers trucking. Yeah, yeah. Podcast? Oh, yeah. I'm on. I did a. I did a few episodes with them. It's a lot uh, dirtier than on here. But, oh, cool. uh, okay. Maybe we'll. Have he's not looking for that sponsors or nothing. Possible. He's not. That was that possible? Yeah. He's not looking for sponsors. All right. Uh, uh, so yeah, you can find my stuff. Yeah. Twitter, uh, or sorry, not Twitter, Instagram, TikTok at Recovery on Weed. And just memes, stories, jokes, all my own stuff there. So you're saying that you per- you can recover from drugs and alcohol by smoking weed? <laughs> Is that the, what you're that's the irony? Is that the what irony you're of, the, of the name? Because if that's what you're implying, there's a lot of alcoholics right now that are like, "Fuck, that's my guy." Like I'm into that. Like if I can smoke weed and still be sober, fuck yeah! Finally, I found a way, and you should find that way because it's the right way. Stop being sober and not smoking weed. You should smoke weed and be sober. It's the only way to go. Yes. It's the marijuana maintenance program. They call it an AA. Marijuana, marijuana maintenance, maintenance program. That's all. There you go. I've been over a thousand AA meetings, and I'll tell you right now, that's true. <laughs> this, this, this guy says, "Do you guys have parlor?" <laughs> parlor. <laughs> it's pretty funny, the actually. Fact that, oh my god, I need parlor. Fuck that. Oh, I hope so. We gotta get uh, this guy on the podcast. Are we finishing this podcast? I don't want it to end. I'm so happy right now. Right now. This has been the happiest part of the last week of hours. The week. Yeah, of no, I, I'm looking forward to these Wednesdays. If this is uh, what they're like, what they're starting out as, it's, yeah. I think they're going to be a good time. Let's see if yeah, next Wednesday we can have like. So right now there's four of us. Let's see if next Wednesday we can have six. Yeah, you guys did great. Yeah. Other than you didn't provide me any whiskey, you guys did great. <laughs> thanks for having me guys uh, thanks cheers, for having buddy. us guys cheers Emil good to see you we'll Adam. see you soon guys <laughs> see you cheers soon. guys later everybody alright have a good night everybody alright peace funny here we just keep going and going and going like, like we're like tomorrow we're like tomorrow yeah. 11 a.m. we're like still going I got the dad fan show coming up in two hours <laughs> that's fucking giver fuck that right yeah it'd be hilarious I'm hopeless in the crossfire There's nowhere to go